<laughs> I love you guys are all comparing ours. You're making me want to. I want to look at mine now too. Hi everybody. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Danny and Pendle, thank you. Trish, thank you. Uh, yeah, I want to look at my recap. I'm not even sure how to parse this. Let's see. As there's like a creator one and then a viewer one. 2.14 million hours. That's how many hours people watched me this year. <laughs> 2.14 million hours. What? 182 streams. That surprises me, honestly. I mean, that means I stream pretty much every other day the entire year. I can't complain with that. I would have expected that number to be a lot lower. I would have expected like 120, 140, maybe. That's, uh, I'm very pleased with that. There are six thousand over 6,000 clips made. My top stream had 19,800 viewers. I don't know if that was opening day or I think it was the day when we had the guests. I think we actually peaked a little bit more in the day where we had all the, uh, all the guests on. Ah, Gaxu, thank you. Oh, me and my warm mug of coffee. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gexu. Uh, I think it might have been opening day at yeah, 19.8. We almost hit 20k viewers, which is like 10,000 more than I've ever had before. Uh, 1.4 million chats were sent. So thank you, chatters. Thank you. Top five categories. <laughs> Minecraft, go figure. Played up. Diablo, Phasmophobia, and Void Train. Pretty much just the top two are the ones that matter the most, though. I, and now I'm realizing I need more diversity. I need more diversity. <laughs> so, so much of this game, this Minecraft game. There's the emotes. The favorite clip of the year. Tango's greatest enemy, the berry bush. <laughs> The number one clip of the year. 717 million channel points were spent. 48,000 new followers. Wow. 286 hype trains. <laughs> Your loudest fans. Here we go. Dee Dee Fessler, Travesty, Ashley McBride, Doc Knox, Hishirikos, Daniel, Kiranon, and Fearless Freearn. Amazing. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. I'm glad they do that. Basically just turn through their databases. <clears throat> That's cool. <coughs> way to go, peeps. I know, way to go. Ori Fox, thank you for the piece of pie. Duke Rock Hopper, thank you for the five gift subs. Uh, all right, guys, today, uh, Drakey, thank you. Jinx, thank you. Everybody being amazing, right? Today's gonna be a little bit different, right? It's gonna be uh, pretty much what you're looking at right now. Today's gonna be very much a chatty stream. Uh, we're going to be doing something that I've promised for a while. It won't be for everyone, okay? This won't be for everyone, and I and I acknowledge that, so if it's not for you, no worries. Um, we're going to be doing a post-mortem where I kind of do a, a deep dive through all the different systems of Decked Out and talk, 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 talk about what I think worked and what I think didn't work. Um basically a big retrospective the postmortem is, is a term they use in the game industry or on any like movies or anything like big projects when it's over to say like the what went right what went wrong thing um so we're gonna be we're gonna be doing that uh and we'll be answering questions and stuff of course too i'm also i speaking of questions i have a spreadsheet of uh questions that were asked uh last week or something um and i'm gonna run through all those there's like 70 questions we're gonna we're gonna speed run through all of those i think that'll be fun uh, and then I'm also going to be showing off the Dungeons and Dragons module for Deep Frost. For, for Decked Out. The Decked Out Dungeons and Dragons module that is 108 pages. Uh, I'll be giving the link out for that today. Uh, I'll probably be tweeting it later too. Um, it's 
That's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, for those that don't know, if you if you played uh if you play Dungeons and Dragons and, and you're you're a nerd like me, um, and you also like decked out and Deep Frost Citadel, you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna download this and check it out because it's uh someone made a absolutely professional, comprehensive, full campaign uh with like every, you'll see well you'll see it's amazing it's absolutely incredible um hold on let me stroll i don't know if i want to listen to wardens this entire time punch and slime anonymous thank you thank you anonymous i will i will look for it yeah i've been i haven't i haven't got to the comments on my video today yeah by the way hey guys there was a video on the second channel today <clears throat> as everyone calls it now the second channel because it's like you know I never upload there I know <laughs> there was a video on the main channel we did a Hermitcraft episode today the U2s are out so if you want to get yourself a uh, a uh, Dungeon Master U2s vinyl they're out today as well the monument is so cool I, I'll be honest I don't think it's as cool as it could have been I think it's alright I think I think he'll be happy they're not available yet. They are now. They are now. I know there was a communication issue that I, I they weren't going to make it go live until 3 p.m. Eastern. I put the video out at my normal time and yeah, but they are. It's uh, it's already active now. So if you if you went there and it wasn't active, it's active now. <clears throat> my wife says she wants uh, wearable merch. Yeah, that's uh, we'll talk about that. In fact, this, this is a question that I'll be answering about that. And we'll, we'll get to it then. Um. I've also decided today, like, those of you that watch Impulse, he got the, uh, Elgato's got a new product. I don't even know how new it is anymore. They're, uh, they have a prompter, like a teleprompter, and it's really cool, and I want it because I'm tired of looking over here instead of looking here. So I really want to get their teleprompter so that I can actually look at you guys while I'm reading chat. Do you guys, have you noticed the change when Impulse... Uh, does it or whatever when reach chat and stuff. I think I think it's just so much better. I don't know So I think I think that's something I want to get but they're out of stock right now <laughs> Doc Knox, I'm always looking at you right now. I'm looking at you Right now It's kind of creepy is it What's up swag how you doing you don't like it Awkward. Wow. Interesting. It feels odd. Interesting. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> a lot of, uh, are you saying eye contact? Cause I was just doing this. Interesting. I'll talk to impulse. See what he thinks. We're awkward. Yeah. <laughs> Look into my soul. <laughs> All right, so let's get started today. We got a, we got a lot to cover. I don't know if this will be an hour stream or a three hour stream or a thirty minute stream. Uh, probably not thirty minutes because we got a lot of blabbing to do. Uh, we're gonna go through, like I said, everything that went right and everything that went wrong. In my opinion, you guys may disagree, and that's open for input. Um, uh, we're gonna start with the what went right and talk about those. Uh, and then we'll get to the what went wrongs and again, we'll do the we'll do some questions and we'll do the D&D uh, The D&D module and stuff in between there probably I don't know where I should be where, where should we sit for this? I mean there may be times we fly around Not up there not up there not up there not up there <sighs> That didn't work out how it was supposed to Pebbles! That was, sounds just about right. Sounds just about right. Where should we? I, I need a good like perch at the top of the tower. The problem is if I go up to the top of the tower, I may want to actually come down here to look at stuff. But yeah, let's go up to the top of the tower. Why not? We never we never use the top of the tower. Top of one of the towers. How about that? We'll go to the top of the the semi tallest tower. Here we go. No one ever comes in here. <laughs> we, we, we'll, maybe we'll go out on the ledge. Oh, I know where we'll go. Let's see. We can go. Yeah, I'm going to miss this place. 
This is still like, I know the game overshadowed this build, but this build is my favorite build I've ever made of all time. I absolutely love this Citadel. I think I did a great job on it. I'm very pleased with it and all that stuff and blah, blah, blah. Uh, all right, let's get started. Let's uh, move this to probably up here. Back down to postmortem. What went right? Nothing. All right, let's move on to the what went wrong. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. Uh, what went right? The first thing I want to say that went right is, uh, and by the way, if you guys have any questions or comments, anything, um, feel free to interject, ask questions, disagree, whatever, all along the way, because that's this is a conversation. I don't want this just to be a rant stream. This is a uh, open discussion and stuff, because maybe we can learn for future versions. <laughs> what went right? Willie. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Willie went right. <clears throat> uh, okay, first thing that I think went right, and these are in no particular order, by the way. I just, they're kind of as they came to me, so don't think that these are prioritized or anything like that. Um, first thing I think that went right was the cards. The card design, the card art, the format of the cards, pretty much everything about the cards, with a few exceptions. There is a little bullet point in the things that I thought went wrong, but overall, I'm very, very, very happy with uh, with the cards. I thought they were fun. They were satisfying to look at. Um, they felt impact. So there's two two aspects here. Like, how did they feel and look and everything? And all that was great. Like, Moselbop did a great job on all the art and everything. Uh, you know, they're, they're open to feedback and everything. So it was, it was perfect. Absolutely perfect. But then the design part of it, I thought, I thought they were... If I had to score the design of the cards out of 100, I'd probably give them about an 80. And we'll discuss what that 20 is down below. And there's, if I had to do it over, there's definitely some things I would do differently. But overall, I thought they were fun. Um, I have ideas. If I, like I said, if I had to do it over again, I think I could do it much better. Maybe I might give it a 75, nothing about it. But overall, super, super happy with the cards. Um, Loot and scooting. Yeah. I mean, you know, anytime you get people shouting out the names of the cards as they're playing, that's a good thing. Yeah. <clears throat> they, yeah. The, the cards were definitely impactful. The cards definitely allowed you, as you built your deck, it made a difference and allowed you to go deeper into the dungeon, which was cool. You know, I often wonder if we if we started over, and we're not doing this to be clear, but if we started over like a season two of Decked Out right now and everyone had all the knowledge, <clears throat> all the knowledge that they had, or all the knowledge that they have now, but started over with a clean deck, how many people would just immediately run to like hard or something like that, right? And could they? It'd be it'd be interesting to see. Um, it'd be interesting to see like what was holding them back. Was it dungeon knowledge or was it you know clank block? I think it was a little bit of both. And now that they have all the dungeon knowledge, I think they could probably push themselves a little bit further than the cards would normally allow. But it'd be interesting. But anyways, I think I think the Cubs or the, cu the Cubs. I just read Cub in chat. Uh, I think the I think the cards were impactful, and I'm I'm very 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 happy with how they turned out. Uh, what else went right? This one, uh, was a big one. And this one, th uh, some of these, many of these, <laughs> this wasn't obvious. Back down 2 became a lot better because of you guys. Because we did a lot of this on stream. Uh, yes sir, 14, 16, thank you for the five gifted subs. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, <laughs> myself a little bit <laughs> actually terrified for one second <laughs> come that was so good <laughs> just casually walks in oh it's getting dark out here it's getting dark out here. Oh, oh, nope. Not this. Not that. Do that. Do this. Sleep. <sighs> the casual flyby with the ward. That was so good, Cub. He just made made my day with the, the clip. That clip is the best. <laughs> best clip ever. Um, so anyways, where was I? Yeah, I was saying that 
chat, you guys, the stream, however you want to put a label on it, made Deck Tattoo so much better because of the uh just the ideas that we shared back and forth. All the ideas that we, we riffed on and stuff, it was amazing. Uh Kyron Saber, thank you. How you doing? Um, and one of the ideas that came from chat, I think, or maybe it was a hybrid of like you guys and me together. I'm not sure, but this was something that was not originally designed and it was probably the biggest and best change to decked out. And that was keys, adding keys that required you, you had to go find a key to get to the next level. <clears throat> I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, it was tedious or whatever, but that's what kept the runs dynamic. Without keys, players would have taken the exact same route every single time to go to, and it would have just been really, really repetitive. Keys were the best thing ever. Like that was that was a, an absolute home run and it was an easy addition too, for the most part. Gem is great. Um, they were necessary. Like imagine the game without, without keys. If, if it was just like, oh, you start and there was no doors, you just walk down. Like no one would have ever seen or used parts of the map. Like if once they got past easy level, no one would have looked at any parts of the crypt ever. It would have just been like, walk straight down. Um, so yeah, I stole this bed from Etho last night. <laughs> I made the bed going through his supplies and pink wool was the first color I, I grabbed. Um, berries, yeah, berries are on that list too. I, I should probably mention berries. They're not on my list, but berries worked out perfect. Uh, berries were fantastic because they were, eight, I was able to control the, the amount of berries people had and berries did two things. One, it gave, <clears throat> it gave them a limited supply of food. It wasn't overpowering, it didn't give them a ton of food, it gave them enough, but it forced them to move around the dungeon. People changed their path and moved around the dungeon in different ways to pick up more berries. And that is super important too. It's like, it's like keys. You need things that pull you in different direction as a player instead of just staying tunnel vision moving along. So berries were absolutely fantastic, especially when they kill dungeon masters, yeah. <laughs> Uh, what went right? Number three. This one's going to surprise a lot of you guys probably, but I'm going to say the Ravagers. I know their AI is garbage and I know it takes them a long time to follow you and I know they lose sight of you a lot, but in the end, I think Ravagers did a, did a, did a pretty okay job at uh, providing a threat to the player. It kept them on their toes. Um, yeah, I mean, Tango's cough, right? The best. So I think the Ravagers did a fantastic job. Uh, track in, thank you. <laughs> Family can't wait to dive into Deck Out and play. Appreciate the hours of content, amazing work you've done. Uh, track in 79, thank you so, so much. Yeah, I, I know there's a lot of people looking forward to the world download. And like I said, we're gonna have a stream maybe this week, maybe end of this week. We'll do, we'll probably be getting to the world download stream which is basically where we go through the whole game and make sure everything is 100% ready and crystal clear. And I'll be looking for your guys' feedback. Like, hey, you just downloaded this world. Do you know what to do? What questions do you have if you want to play this game? That's the kind of stuff we'll be uh, we'll be getting answered and getting situated and clear. Uh, your call, thank you. Thank you so much. My husband got me into Friday Night Stabby Stabby first. Now the Hermitcraft streams and VODs are daily routine. Ah, thank you. Thank you for being here. Very cool, very cool. I miss, I know, I miss Friday Night Stabby Stabby. We're not talking about that. Rip Tango's cough. I know, the legend. <clears throat> uh, so anyways, yeah, Ravagers, I thought Ravagers were fantastic on levels one and two. They did a great job. Uh, you know, so many people died in and around the River of Souls because of Ravagers. So many people died in, you know, the mushroom biomes or in the lava areas of, crypt of, of Caves of Carnage, all because of, uh, because of what do you call it? Because of Ravagers. One Ravager isn't that much of a threat, but when you start putting two or three in there, it was good. I think we had a pretty good balance of Ravager density, meaning how many Ravagers per level. Uh, zoning, I think... If you guys remember, I was really on the fence about Ravager zoning. I didn't want to do it, but it was pretty important, and I think it was the right choice. I think the pros outweighed the cons, so if I had to do it again, I think I probably would still also uh, zone them again. Otherwise, they just... Uh, yeah, it was a good call. I think it, it was like, it was it was the better of the two evils. You know, I hate that the players knew where the zone line was. Like nothing made me sadder every time someone walked into the crypt entrance and they just knew that they were safe on that right stair because they knew there was a zone line there. That's the way it goes. Yeah, that's the way it goes. Flaming Giant, thank you for the biddies. I appreciate it so much. Yeah, they got de-zoned occasionally. Yeah, one Ravager would boop into it another. Anyways, Ravagers, Ravagers were slam dunk. They were, they were fantastic. Um, I don't have... For whatever reason, I don't have Willy on my list. Willy is on the list, obviously. Um, 
the Willie the Drowned in and around the boat. The best addition to the game. Added so much fun. Added quite a bit of threat. I, he might have been a little bit too strong, <laughs> but he did so much for that area, right? I wanted to make a lake area. I wanted to have a big kind of like, you know, alcoves and little, uh, little, uh, I'm failing to come up with the word here or whatever, but those little indentations and stuff like that where the player could go in and find treasure or keys or, 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 or artifact drops, for instance. All that was great, all surrounded by the lake with the big pirate ship. It was such a beautiful area that B-Dubs created, um, we both created, uh, and I knew I couldn't have Ravagers in there because you guys know once a Ravager goes in the water, they're just like, I, they might as well not be there. So I had to seclude that whole area off and isolate the Ravagers and I needed something in there and Willie was a slam dunk and it just took one Willie and he patrolled that area and made, it was, he was fantastic. He was, he was the best. Can't say enough about it. He's probably one of the best, one of the best successes of, of, uh, of, of the whole game. Uh, Leon, thank you. <sighs> Absolute legend. Leon SBU, thank you so much. Yeah, it's, it's been a fun ride. It's been an absolute fun ride. Um, so yeah, Willie was absolutely amazing. The fear he brought to the players, the, the mental transition of like leaving a Ravager area and immediately going into the lake. The first thing someone ever thought every time was, where's Willie? Where's Willie? How do I find him? How do I avoid him? How do I navigate this area because of where he is? And it changed what, the, okay, Willie's over there. I'm going this way, that kind of thing. It was great. And of course, Doc getting sniped was one of the best moments of the whole the whole game, yeah. He was very impactful, yeah. <laughs> no pun intended, right? That window into the lake was a great addition. Yes. Um I agree, Cub. I, that lake that 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 window, I assume you're talking about the one like right above the entrance to Rusty's room. Um was very important in the level design. It allowed you to see the area. I mean, I jump boost aside. It allows you to see the area and get a, a foreshadowing of what was down there without actually going in there. Um, but it was also good because you could scope out where Willie was before he went in there. You generally, generally weren't at threat in that room, you know, unless Willie climbed up the water pillars and sniped you from 100 yards away. Um, but yeah, that 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 uh, that overlook was was important, I think. Uh, which leads us to the next thing I think that went right. Uh, and I think that's level design. I think I am extremely happy with all four levels. <clears throat> I think the level design, like I'm not, I'm not here to brag or anything, but I think I did a really great job on level design. Um, I think all four levels had, uh, a very distinct feel. I, I felt like they weren't mechanical, like... I tried to avoid like right, right turns and angles and things that feel very Minecrafty. I tried to give everything like a organic cave shape and everything, uh, with the exception of the black mines. That was more uh, right angle and mechanical because that was a man-made area. Um, but you know the uh, the theme and palettes of each one I thought was very distinct, clearly uh, and fun. But how the level is shaped and navigated was also very different. I mean, there, I guess there's some similarities between level one and level two. But overall, level two was way more wide open uh, and Ravagers worked very differently on, on Caves of Carnage than they did in the in the Frozen Crypt. Uh, you know, Frozen Crypt was more about knowing where the Ravagers are and trying not to get pinched in tight corridors where the Caves of Carnage, you had to be a lot smarter keeping track of the Ravagers because if you entered an area and that Ravager followed you into that area, there are points where you're just like, you're dead. There's no juking here. Uh, and that was, that was intentional. Um, I think Caves of Carnage was the first one to have some like overlapping. It was a little bit confusing to learn the level intentionally. Um, at first, uh, when you think about things like Spider Den and where uh, like the, the Ravager Den, uh, the Ravager Den nest or whatever it is, <clears throat> and like Pearl's room and some all a lot of that stuff like went above and below each other and that contributed to the confusion uh, and, and it taking some time to learn a level, which I think is a good thing. Spider Den was great. <sighs> Overall, I wouldn't say the Spider Den was a success. I think it was interesting. Um, 
I think I had this somewhere else I was going to talk about it, but we can talk about the spider a little bit. When it when it launched, I actually I was talking about this to Scar uh, off camera last night. Um, the spider den started out way too hard and everyone was really terrified of it. And then I changed it a little bit and I changed some of the lighting in there so they wouldn't spawn as fast. Uh, and then it became way too easy and I was they were both wrong. It needed to be somewhere in between, I think. Uh, as of right now, I think the spider den is too easy. I think there's about a 95% chance you're going to run right through there without even seeing a spider or getting hit. Um, the idea is fun. I like what the spider den represented, which was it was supposed to be a direct path shortcut shortcut that can get you where you want to go really fast, but has a has an element of high risk associated to it. Um, it had that at the beginning, but then no one was taking it and then everyone was kind of taking it later on. So it was somewhere in between. I don't know. Overall, it was fun, though, I think. Yeah, there was a lot of there was a lot of suggestions about the, the lighting in the uh, spider den area should have been hazard based. Uh, and that makes sense. Like it, it, it could have been. Well, it makes sense. I, I don't know that I agreed with it because the idea would have been like it would have been lit up at first. And then if that hazard triggered, the lights went off. Um, the I think the problem with that, though, is that if the lights were on, it becomes like way too. I, I like the idea of it always being a constant threat in the back of your mind that going that way is a shortcut, but doesn't necessarily uh, isn't exactly safe. But uh, how can I play decked out uh, <laughs> when the world download is released? You'll be able to. Polaris, thank you so much. Aesthetically, you love the spider den. Yeah, I mean, it was it's, it was black, right? It was black concrete. It was black stone and black concrete powder it was basically what made that up. Um, yes, it's, it's working time here. Um, for me, I would say spiders were an option of the last resort. Interesting. Okay. That, that's good, I would guess, Cub, because that counters the way I perceived it. It seemed to me like spiders were very easy at the end. Like, it's, I can't remember the last time someone got hit by a spider. Um, but anyways, that's enough about spiders. Overall, overall level design, I'm super, super happy with, uh... The frozen crypt, I love the way it was like a, a bunch of organic ice caves that then transitioned into a crypt area, which I probably could have done a little bit better job decorating the crypt, if I'm honest, but I thought it was it was OK. Um, caves of Carnage, I think, were, was fantastic, uh, wide open, but very different themed areas from the lava area to the mushroom area to the to the pirate ship in the lake and the pearls room. You have very distinct areas there, which is fun. The Black Mines, still still my favorite level. The atmosphere that one brings in, um, probably because it was multi-level, uh, probably the hardest level to learn uh, and to map out in your head. I mean, I still get lost down there myself. You know, it's it's confusing. Um, and then level four was interesting. In retrospect, I think the palette I chose for level four was great. Super happy with that. Super happy with like the vines and the towers and things like that. I wish I made level four a little bit. It's it's flat. The whole thing is perfectly flat. Um, it should have had a little bit more height, you know, uh, three dimensional overpass underpass kind of thing. I think would have been would have been a little bit better. Um, not a lot, but just like an area that goes over and something that goes under just a little bit of that verticality. Yeah, would have been would have been nice. Would have been good. Hi, friend. I'm probably going to get creeper during this stream. I have no idea what's spawn proof down here. What isn't <clears throat> verticality? Yeah, uh, the walls were a failure on my part. I don't blame the players for trying to jump on the walls because that's the smart thing to do. Um, I did not. I underestimated how <laughs> I designed the level for the way that I thought it would be like interesting to be played, but I didn't consider what the smart you know, optimal play would be. Uh, and I didn't want players to go on the walls that defeated the whole point of the level. And it felt like one of those things where I'm like, now I'm being the bad guy because I'm putting down pressure plates everywhere to keep them off the walls. But it was kind of like, to me, that was a bug and an oversight and I wanted to correct it. I don't want to, I don't want to sledgehammer people into playing the level the way I want, but walking on the walls felt like, felt like a, like almost like a hack or something. You're, you're bypassing the entire content to me. So that's why I wanted to keep them off the walls. 
but the whole thing left kind of a dirty taste like it was i didn't like having to put those pressure plates on the walls the players definitely didn't like it and i understand that and respect that it was just a i don't know i, I should have had better foresight and made it never an option from from day one right if they could have never got on the walls then it wouldn't i would have never had to have taken it away so to speak and it would have been fine i just should have i should have had better foresight when 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 building it yeah hindsight <clears throat> still think the shrieker walls could have been cool they could have been yeah i just didn't like the look of it it would have taken too many shriekers Redstone tour when? Whenever you want, Jim. Except not now. <laughs> but yeah, I would love to. Uh, they, they'll be upon request, Jim. So yeah, if you want to set up a time where uh, we can stream or whatever, that'd be perfect. <clears throat> Change our location here. Play test. Yeah, play testing would have been good. I mean, there was zero play testing. The only play testing we had was Zed doing a little bit of level one and stuff. Other than that, it was it was just I made it and it's like, here we go. Here we go. Hope this works. Um by the way, guys, thank you for everything. Um Dude, dude Kiwi, thank you so much. <laughs> I really appreciate that, dude Kiwi. Thank you so much. Uh Jay Bird, thank you. <sighs> It is not, it is not minimal. It is so appreciated. Thank you so much, Jaybird. I appreciate it. Gak, thank you for the five gift subs. Um, Yeah, honestly, the fact that the game was pretty, pretty darn playable without any real play testing, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, Jamber, thank you for the 10 gift subs. I'm very, very happy with that. You know, it, it generally worked without, you know, with some, with some issues. I needed to bring in a non hermit for playtesting. Yeah, probably. But honestly, that playtesting, if done correctly, would have taken a month, right? I didn't have that kind of time. Um, I didn't have the, the time to playtest and watch multiple people play the game and collect data and watch watch them run and stuff. I mean, you guys see how long it takes to watch people run. I spent my last three months in streams doing it. Um, So I think we just kind of had to roll the dice and it, and it worked out okay. Uh, a lot of people talking about the map. Yeah, I didn't have I forgot about the map. I didn't have that on there. I would say the map I will add it to my list here, even though we're we're kind of done, but I'll talk about it now just for record keeping. The map was uh was fantastic, honestly. Um when I did it, I was like it was I'll, I'll be honest, it was more of a I want to do this cuz I think it's a cool idea. Um and I think some people never really used it but some people very much used it. Uh, I think it was really good at giving that feedback and satisfaction that you're... It wasn't used so much as like, oh, I'm getting critical information from this and I'm adjusting my gameplay based on what's on that map. But it was just a feel-good kind of thing of knowing that, oh, this card happened and having this... Seeing the feedback in real time that the card is supposed to do X and now I see the results of X... Yeah, impulse in, in, in phase seven is just like not having no idea how the card work or how the map worked. That was funny. Um, but like I said, some people just never used it and that's fine. But and other people like like Cub was saying the map was was critical. It, it took a lot of work uh, and it was a 100% feature creep. So it could have been cut, but I think it was pretty cool. Having that real time user interface essentially is what it was. Um, but like I said, it was also just it was just a cool thing to have that kind of have that kind of like I haven't seen that really done before of a dynamic redstone driven map to act like a user interface to act like a feedback for a game. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so I'm, I'm happy I did it for sure. Maybe, maybe it could, there could have been other things on the map. Um, I think I got, having your, your card counter on the map was pretty critical. That was probably the most important piece of information is knowing how many cards you have left because that's like you're okay i'm getting i'm running out of you know oh it's i've got five cards left versus i've got 20 cards left you play your game 
differently, make different decisions based on how many cards are left. So that was kind of important. Um, knowing how much clank block you have. Yeah, knowing how much like clank and hazard block you have, you're allowed to sample that kind of mentally sample it as you're playing the game. And that's that's like subconsciously letting you know, OK, my deck is doing good for clank block now versus if you're looking at it and you're always out of you have nothing you have no clank block queued up and you're always hearing the the clank increase sound that's your indicator conversely that hey i really need to start because so i think i think the map was good at helping you balance out your deck and letting you know what you needed and what you didn't exactly cub yeah captain thank you so much i love how, you're, how your brain works well i'm figuring out as we go here The map is so they didn't have to try and keep track of all that in their head yeah there was a lot of things uh i mean jt you bring up a good point of like there was a lot of things that were probably most players just started to tune out i mean there's a lot of data thrown at you in the game you know like plank and and hazard levels and treasures dropping and 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 all the like cards being called out and stuff and i think it might have been too much i'm not sure um i tried to keep it manageable and there's a lot of things that you needed but at the same time who knows maybe maybe it could have been streamlined a little bit more but uh next on my list is audio let's face it audio made decked out like if you think about all the audio that went into the game and how important it was from different aspects like card callouts we couldn't have had i mean we couldn't have had decked out as is being played without the audio mod without those cards being called out there's no way to let the player know what card was being called out and it, you would have just put your deck in and then just even if it worked the same way but if there was no audio call out it would have been so incredibly unsatisfying because you'd just be like i guess these cards are working which is what decked out one was and you only had five cards in decked out one or something stupid like so the audio call out system was was critical for for card playing um i think i did an okay job voice acting them yes a professional could have done better could have been less cringe um but they were definitely good enough uh for for the game and i think there were some that were fun um so the audio the card call outs were were fantastic the fact that they existed and stuff um but then you but then there's i mean then you get into like the ambient noises and stuff just my my audio guy did amazing he's gonna make a post on reddit by the way if you're on if you're on the hermitcraft reddit there will be a post coming up uh soon where he's gonna kind of go into all the detail and everything I, i'm kind of excited for it um but he did an amazing job and was such a pleasure to work with um the the ambient stuff like the the drones i call them the drones um, I know when I say drones, a lot of you guys think about flying robots and stuff, but the, 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 the background low murmuring noises that are going on and blending together and stuff really just fed into that feel. And then the ice cracks in the background and stuff like that. And then when you get to like the black mind, you start hearing those distant metal clankings and wood and stuff like that. And then, and then you get to level four and the, the a whole new set of background ambience and stuff. That stuff was all super critical to like one of the one of the common things you always hear or i always hear is i completely forget i'm playing minecraft in decked out you know it feels like another game and i'm so immersed i forget i'm playing minecraft um and that's true and i think that's i think the audio was a huge portion of that 100 percent. i think the audio was a big portion of setting that immersion this audio and then and then audio did uh you know it, it there was the ambient stuff but then there was also the the feedback of like oh you're you know the tiptoe sounds when you just blocked clank things like that some of the some of the audio feedback was was super critical as well redstone box what oh what is this am i gonna get creeper here uh oh <laughs> has this been sitting here <laughs> whoops that's been there for a while 
<laughs> back from uh when i built this like what seven months ago that's hilarious <laughs> whoops <laughs> uh so anyways i cannot give enough praise to the to the audio uh everything everything about it you know like when we added the the shuffle sound just recently um not the shuffle sound the, the recycle sound like all those things are so cool and so key to making it feel like a game uh so anyways yeah super super happy with that uh let's go let's go down because the next two things are redstone based The toots and the dings. Yes, the toots and the dings are on my list, actually. The, um, in fact. I thought I put that on the list. I would have sworn I had that. Yeah, it's a minor thing. The, uh, the, we call them the toots and the dings. <laughs> the, 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 the actual just vanilla note block sounds that play when treasure or frost embers are released that was such an afterthought it was like oh okay we have treasure and and frost embers being dropped in the dungeon and then i was like wait a minute if i just slap a note block on the side of this we'll get a little sound playing for it and it was kind of it was totally an afterthought but it made such a difference especially for the really experienced players um it turned out to be absolutely critical yeah you would hear those noises and you'd be like okay treasure over there i'm gonna diverting over there and i thought that was great because instead of just having that hopeless random feeling of wandering around randomly you had a little bit of short range indication of where to go to get the treasure and the key you needed or to get the frost embers or something like that um so it was great it was way better than just blindly walking around you had some information but it was a hint it wasn't it wasn't crystal clear like uh, maybe when you start gotten getting like a, like really expert level you would know okay i know exactly which one that is based on where i am and stuff but for the most part you're like okay i heard something to my left and you would start to walk over there with the hint that there was something over there and i thought that was great um so yeah it, it was a good a good blend of not being clueless but not giving you all the information and it was such a simple feature to add to it was it was fantastic Yeah, Etho was really good at hearing those sounds and knowing exactly where to go to get the to get the rewards. The artifact design was great. Yeah, we had. I mean, the artifacts were were designed. I mean, that was, they were. There's probably the first piece of like custom stuff we did. They were done well before the cards and everything. Uh, yeah, we did those on stream, and you guys. All these these fun quirky little sayings that they all said was all all chat, right? We came up with the name of the item and we, we went I mean we had a whole stream dedicated to coming up with this like lore text on each one and it made each one of these things like either hilarious or just perfect or like they were they were amazing. They were amazing. So I just yeah, this is the the artifacts are hundred percent chat, not me. It was you guys and they they yeah they came out so good because of that so i just want to thank you guys for all the little things that made that made this game so much better uh okay the next two things chat comes through let's go i know it's amazing cub like they there's so many i i can't even remember them right now but there's hundreds of little cases where the the chat had a suggestion i was like that's a great idea let's do it and i forgot most of them now unfortunately but they were so good they were so good um, all right, the next thing I want to talk about is this thing right here. The bus line. This is getting a little bit redstone-y, but I think this was a huge help to managing the redstone. The bus line, for those who don't know, is a 4x4 four four, uh, color-coded uh, stackable kind of array of either redstone or uh uh powered powered uh rails that get updates and send events we use the powered rails because it's it's much less laggy than long redstone updates sometimes i used redstone if it was going to be an infrequent like this is the the game online so i just ran redstone because it would only go on once and off once each time but then there are other ones like the clank block which is going off you know like the or the clank ones and stuff and the hazard ones are going off all the time so we use rails anyways this concept was fantastic. I could have done it better. I could have made it more compact. I learned better tricks of how to pull signals off of it and everything like that. But overall, the, the concept of the bus line and running it around the entire perimeter of the game was huge. 
um because then i knew no matter where i was in the level i had access to i had redstone access to all of the events but basically that's what these are every one of these lines represents an event in the game clank increase hazard increase hazard blocked uh treasure drop embers drop game on game off all these things and no matter where i was in the dungeon i just had to know what color that was tie into it and bring it over to do you know to what i wanted to do and it was it was huge that way like red is uh clank increase yeah, red is the the you know the uh, clank increase line um and i just had to tie it into the nearest element in the thing instead of having like it really reduced the redstone soup and i know that sounds comical right now because look there's redstone soup everywhere but it would have been much much worse i wouldn't have been able to fly down here if it wasn't if it wasn't for uh if it wasn't for the for the bus system so i think i think it's fantastic and i, I would absolutely do it again um i kind of did it we also have one down here too uh where is it right here this one's not as clean but you can still kind of see the same um you can see this is where i started to learn better tricks like i realized that the bus lines could have been adjacent to each other when i was using rails and stuff didn't need to uh didn't need to put a space between them um so you know yeah we have basically a similar bus system going around all of level three uh and down into level four where necessary not as clean again as the one in level one and two but it still provided a huge function so um yeah de deck dot one was huge spaghetti uh <laughs> dead night yeah i think you know the answer to that you're curious what inspired you using the bus line was it playing tolls or playing satisfactory no it was playing it's playing satisfactory for those that watched me play satisfactory i don't even know if it was a year ago or two years ago that's where i first started using what i call the bus system and i'm not i'm not inventing that phrase at all don't i'm not trying to claim i have coining of that or whatever um i think satisfactory was two years ago yeah um uh it was it was that concept of like just send everything down one kind of thick you know wiring pipe and and treat all your events the same and keep them aligned and coordinated and stuff and it just made a big made a big difference i could do it better a second uh, if i did this a second time around for sure but overall the bus line was was fantastic factorio is where it comes out a lot yeah absolutely any any factory game that you want to really get into organization and stuff is going to want to use this concept i think um <clears throat> the next thing uh is this over here and i know and i know it's hard to and you know figure out what's what anywhere here but everything from here to down here is card processing and i think it went well this right here is absolutely insane and there's no way around that because this is the glue all this spaghetti right here is the glue between the card processors and the bus line and i intentionally put the card processor here to have full access to the bus line so that whenever a card was processed it was basically just right there right in front of the card processor was every bus line every event that i needed to do so no matter, no matter what the cards needed to do or respond to it was right there in front of them so i knew this was going to be spaghetti but that's fine but the the overall flow here of like you know this is the this is the deck unloader right here it unloads the deck and sends them through the permanent processors every one of these trays here this these are all of the uh permanent processors here some of them aren't done like boots of swiftness the legendary card would have gone right there um speed run goes right there fuzzy bunny slippers they're all here right so every every card has got what i call a card processor and has a little space allocated to respond when that card is played and then do things and put events onto the bus line or, or do whatever and i think i think this whole flow just worked out great so it's unload the deck process the permanents load them into the shuffler again because the permanents don't go into the shuffler the shuffler's here the shuffler then plays cards and sends them down this card processor which is all of the cards in the game are all right here you know you pretty much got every card you can imagine um, and all of those correlate to these uh, different layers and different card processors on this, on this quadruple stack here. Overall, it, it worked great. Would I do anything different? I would make more cards and I would have made this even longer. But this this concept made it super easy to add cards and hook them up. Like if I didn't pre-plan this. And by the way, the location of this is super key. Like 
where this goes. This is part of that pre-plate and pre-planning stuff. Like you have to, before I even thought about building level one, I knew the card processor would be right here. And that was key because it was right along the, the key central point, the, right, on, right on the curve of the bus line. That made it that made it so easy to uh to make cars and stuff like that planning was was such a big part of this before i even started anything i was just like the bus line the card processor all that stuff was all in the storage room was all planned out before i even got started <laughs> there's some signs for what all the signs here are just telling you what the, what each card is on the card processor here. So hopefully anyone who is redstone curious when you get the world down, you'll, you'll be able to see how each of these cards, uh, you know, how they work. <clears throat> Was the location of the game intentional or did you find a spot other hermits have in claim? No. The, I knew the game was going to be underground. Uh, the location was basically, uh, I decided this is where I was going to build my base this season, uh, which was quite honestly, you know, not ideal. I had to re redo the entire biome, obviously. Um, and then once it was underground, I was like, well, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. There's no, there's no pros and cons. To, I just have a lot of digging to do. Cash cow. Yeah, cash cow is a legendary card. We showed off all the legendary cards that would have been that never happened. Uh, are the cards not hooked up going to be hooked up for the world download? No, sorry. It's an exercise left for the reader. Slime chunks are horrible, yeah. Did you plan to make an, inch, uh, an interior of Citadel's upper floors? No, I thought it would have been a, a fun idea, but honestly, I knew it was never going to happen because the game was always a priority to, to the castle and to the build. Um, so, yeah. I'm not going to pronounce this correctly, but hey, Sight. Hey, Sight, thank you for the 10. Get the sub. Smash Mellow, thank you so much. I appreciate Um. Anyway, so yeah, I'm super happy with this redstone here. This right here, like, I'm, I'm so tempted, guys, to do a stream where I rip out dead redstone because it's killing me because this is all obsolete. There's so, all of this is obsolete. It's not even used anymore. Once we got some of the audio player uh, changes, and this area would look just so much cleaner down here and be like, oh, it's actually not that spaghetti. <laughs> you know, things are actually working the way they should. And it looks kind of clean. I, I just think there's so much dead stuff. All of this, this is all dead. This is all dead. Tremendous amounts of, of dead redstone. Uh, were there any limitations you ran into with chunk loading? Obviously, the map was one. Yes, it was. Um, yeah, there was one bug, uh, chunk loading was the big one for, I had to get the spectator cam, you know, we have to have Tango cam, which he's not on now because I rebooted, I gotta get him on, um, to get the map to work correctly. There was one issue I ran into, and that was, we're right here, these, this kind of, like, these lines right here are all the lines that are going out to the map system, basically saying, increment, decrement treasure, increment, decrement frost embers, you know, increment, decrement cards available all these lines so every one of these you'll see is stacked too high the top one is the positive the bottom one is the negative to send signals to the map to either increment or decrement whatever that you know relative counter is um this right here was out of chunk range for the when the player was when the player was like just entering level two the caves of carnage down here i know it's turning into a redstone stream we're not going to do that um just entering the caves of carnage that stuff was out of date and there was a bug early on that we fixed in like phase two or something like that where the map wasn't updating correctly and it was because it was just an unloaded chunks um so yeah unfortunately i had to go change the chunk loading distance for hermitcraft to fix it zach thank you for the raid i appreciate it estimated of total hours spent on the entire project i can't i can't i have no idea many many hundreds opinion on the vexes oh we'll get there we'll get there don't you worry uh yeah so actually card processor is the last thing on my what went right list there's probably things i'm forgetting there's there's lots of things that uh that you know went right and it's just clear that they went right i think you know the 
the idea of giving out a shark to play the game. You, you can't have unlimited runs. It was, was very key to the game. Um, artifacts were fun. I thought, yeah, the, the artifact art was fun. The, the naming, you know, having all the artifacts for each hermit, I thought was super fun. Um, all that stuff was great. Um, yeah, didn't I have eggs? I thought I had eggs on the list too. Where's my... Oh, that's why. No, we have more things that went right. I had a break here. We're not at the end of the list. There's the other things. Yes. Anyways, I'm going to answer some questions now that we had pulled out. Um, where am I? Oh, sitting here on top of the bus line. <laughs> Tango Tech donated $40. Thank you, Tango Tech. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Whoever you are, it wasn't me. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, okay. Yeah, scrolling is very difficult. Where is my? Here we go. List of questions. We're gonna we're gonna speed run. These were all asked by viewers uh, from the stream last week, where I asked for questions and I didn't uh, I didn't get a chance to answer them or I missed them or whatever. So we'll speed run through some of these. Uh, how does beast sense work? Uh, for those that don't know, when you ring a bell, uh, all nearby illagers within 50 blocks, I think it is, maybe 40 blocks, I forget, will glow. It's just, it's jo it's a Java edition only thing. Yeah, okay. Um, but you can then trigger the bell with redstone just by powering it and the bell rings and then it forces everything to glow. So I didn't do any magic there. That's just, just using a, a vanilla mechanic that's already there. Uh, would you ever release this as a world download? Yes, of course. It'll be in the Hermitcraft uh, world download. How many Etho Hopper clocks are in decked out? Uh, if I had to guess, I'd probably say somewhere in the eight or 10. I don't know. There's one for hazard. There's one for treasure. I think there's one for clank. I don't know. I'd have to go count them, but yeah, a handful, a handful. Uh... How does the drop into level four not cause damage? It's because the players are dropping onto powdered snow, which is uh, which is, has carpet on top of it. When you land on powdered snow, you don't take damage. Uh, were all the secrets revealed? Yeah, the only ones I didn't explicitly reveal are the ones that Pearl uncovered, and you should check out her video. She's working on a video called How I Beat Decked Out or How to Beat Decked Out or something like that, um, and it's gonna go through all of the secrets that she uh, that she uncovered with the bomb and the towers and everything that came after that. It was super cool. Uh, how do you damage Rusty? Uh, that's a good question. I could show you that one while we're here. One second. Um, so Rusty is damaged by... Where's Rusty? Where's Rusty? Right here. Rusty sits in this room right here. Uh, there's a piston right behind him. So I... I know when, it's it's not how I damage him, it's when to damage him, that's actually the tricky part, but the how I damage him, I just extend that piston right there and it boops him in the head um, and he takes one tick of damage. The w knowing when to do that though is the, is the part that takes a little bit more trickiness because you wanna do it when the game, I think I do it when the game ends and when the person repaired Rusty on that run. Because if I damaged him every run, if we went 15, 20 runs without someone repairing Rusty, Rusty would die. So this way here, it's like he only gets repaired after he takes damage um, to take him back up to the top or to take to uh, repair him back up to full. And when they repair him, it heals for way. So even if I miss one or two here or there, I'm only hitting him for one tick of damage. But when they repair him, it heals him for like tons of damage. One, one iron nugget uh, heals for a lot. So that's how Rusty works. How to detect Rusty Repair Kit. Rusty Repair Kit is just, a, is just an iron ingot. If you take an iron ingot and right click on an injured golem, it repairs him. And that is being detected right here by a signal of six into this calibrated skulk sensor. So when you do that, it, it hears Rusty being repaired and triggers the whole system of uh, sending, down, sending down the loop. Do you know how many times he's been repaired? Uh, no, I didn't put a counter on it, unfortunately. Um, that's kind of one of the things I wish I did is added more stat tracking. Um, and, and by that, I mean like, um, you know, just adding a dropper with a, that shot a, an item out to count how many times it happened. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so basically this is ticked. 
This piston here extends over, pushes that observer, makes a little clock, and then ticks this dropper here for a certain amount of time. Uh, in fact, there should be crowns in there. I bet you it's, it's probably out. We need to fix that. There's supposed to be crowns in there. Anyway. So can you repair him with an artifact? No, the artifacts are iron ingots or are iron nuggets. The only thing that's an iron ingot is the rest of the repair kit. It's been a while with no crowns. Yeah, that's just me. Yeah, I did not. I did not nerf Rusty intentionally. What happened is the crowns probably ran out and then the backlog of coins probably filled those slots. So, yeah, we'll fix that for the world download. Uh, no, 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 no. What's the hole next to the berry bush in Pearl's room? I didn't know there was one. Hole next to the berry bush in Pearl's room. Is there one here? Am I missing it? Bottom left. I mean, if there is, the short answer is nothing. It's a mistake. Behind the barrel. I don't see a hole. I'm looking at it. I mean, I know I'm blind, but you just mean I, I'm th when you, someone says hole, I assume I assume they mean a hole in the level. I wouldn't count that as a hole. That, that's just yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing there. That's that's the short answer. <laughs> Rocket scientist, lol. That was my first donation. I put your name instead of mine. <laughs> nice rocket scientist. Nice. Very good. Very good. Uh, hi, evil. How you doing? I really wish Minecraft tracked damage taken by block or damage taken by kinetic energy. Uh, yeah, that would be funny. That would be that would be amazing. I don't I don't think anyone would have a chance of contending with me there. Yeah. What did I miss? A hole? It's nothing? Excellent. Okay, back to the questions. Uh, let's see, here they are, let's see. Uh, what's my favorite donut? Boston cream pie, or Boston cream. Uh, how did you maintain motivation? Uh, the excitement of watching it being played both before launch and after launch my motivation was always the excitement and anticipation of watching the hermits experience the content i was creating that was the reward it sounds it sounds cheesy but it's that's the answer uh are you sad it's over or just happy that it happened uh both sad that it's over a little bit glad that it's over um uh, but mostly just, yeah, super happy that it happened. It was an amazing experience. Uh, were you expecting Barry Bushes to be such a dangerous uh, death method for Dungeon Masters? No, I was not anticipating that. Favorite Ravager name I didn't get to use. Oh, uh, let's see. Where's the list? There they are. Uh, let's see. The only ones on the list here, I got Jukes of Hazard. I got the Safeway, Unfocused Cheese, Lack of Inventory Space, and Tree Milk. Probably lack of inventory space. Probably what he's that one. Jukes of Hazard is pretty good too. Uh, secret book in Grand's room. No, I did not put a secret book in uh, Grand's room. Why no treasure ember on level through on level four? Uh, because you get your treasure and embers on level four in other ways. There's more treasure and embers to be had on level four than all other levels combined. I would say. Uh, we well, missed decked out too, of course. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, did anyone ever press the button on level two to the level three door to reach my storage room? No, not to my knowledge. Um, but I mean, I would even if they knew that it was there, which I'm sure some did, they would have probably seen that as akin to just breaking a, bro a block and exiting the dungeon. <clears throat> uh, were there any ideas to let players go deeper than their artifacts for extra loot? Yeah, I mean, it was considered. I didn't really want to do that. I, like, because to me, that's just farming. And anytime I, uh, farming is always something like I'm not going to make the game intentionally for farming. I know it can't be prevented, but if you want to go deeper, then go get more deeper. I, I guess I just struggled with it. Like, why would someone be willing to go deeper, but not get the artifact that's down there? So I really didn't want to plan for something that I didn't think would happen all that often. 
Uh, what are some very important things you've learned from the perspective of a game designer at Red Star Engineer? Oh, jeez. I mean, those are two totally very different questions. And I could probably dedicate a whole stream to that. <laughs> game designer side. And by the way, I'm not, I'm not a game designer. I just I just play one on, on the internet. Okay, to be clear, I don't I don't have this lofty tile, I, title I want to bestow myself. That feels, I don't know. Um, the only aspect I would say is be more oh, game. The game won't be played the way you intend it to be played. The game will be played the way that is the most efficient even if it's not as fun. Um, that's a general rule for all game design. If someone's trying to win, they will play the way that makes them win. Unfor I mean, not unfortunately, that's just human nature, and that's probably correct, right? So don't design a game. If you're going to try to design something, make sure that the way you want it to be played is also the way that's the most optimal to be played. Make sure those overlap. And I and I miss that in, uh, in a couple of... Uh, key places uh so I would, I would try to fix that for the next time for the most part i think I, I got those to overlap you know going down and getting your artifact and stuff is uh, those overlap but acquiring treasure and stuff like that they don't overlap uh so I, I would i would try to fix that in the future uh da, 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 da. are you gonna make any changes to the final game before the release uh no uh, we were releasing documentation on how to maintain the game for when the world download time. I would recommend going to the world download stream and we'll be putting books and stuff like that on lecterns, but there won't be full documentation. Uh, what are some very... Oh, we did that one. Uh, did anyone find the hidden coin in level two at the top of the green column? I read this and I was like, I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't... Now I'm curious. I want to go see what this is. Uh, where am I? Over here. I remember making the, I assume you're talking about the green pedestal thing we made here. And I probably put something at the top of it as like a troll. And I can't remember now. Is it? Water hazard flows down. Oh. <laughs> How would someone get that? Oh, right. You could swim up the water hazard. Yeah, no, no one ever found that. How would you get inside there, though? Did I break it by adding a block afterwards? Oh, you could swim because the water's coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go, Cub, if you're watching. <laughs> you can swim up there all the way up to the top through this, I guess, because that would be pulled back, and then there's there's a super secret. The final secret is revealed! That's right. <laughs> that's, that's great. I totally forgot we added that. I totally forgot we added that. That's funny. That's a great one. Uh, let's see. Uh, what was the original door to level four? There wasn't one. Uh, I had no plans for how to get from level three to level four. This is another example of how chat made the game better because I'm pretty sure it was chat's idea to drop TNT and blow up the floor. And that was the coolest thing. The feeling and satisfaction the first time you go from level three to level four and that TNT drops is, is amazing. And I'm super glad we got to do that. Uh, could you use command blocks to spawn and despawn all the hostile mobs in the dungeon at the beginning? Of course, yeah. Command blocks would have made this all very, very easy. <laughs> we wouldn't have had a five minute timer. We, I would have never had to fill treasure buckets. Like it would have been, you could make a version of this with command blocks or, or data packs or whatever you want to call it. That would have made this all much, much easier. Uh, are the water kittens still alive? Yeah. Uh, how did you make sounds for the game? I didn't. A professional sound engineer did. Um... Uh, no, 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 no. Did you consider using other mobs? Yeah. I mean, it was everyone was telling me every mob that I should use from Zoglins to uh, Wither Skeletons to whatever. And I, while I don't think it's a horrible idea, I wanted to keep the game as a, as a simple kind of, like, I didn't want it to be a zoo in here. You know, I feel like having a ton of different mobs detracts from the kind of, it's cheesy, but the, the lore of it, right? Like, I, I just like the, the, the consistent 
Levels one and two, you got Ravagers, level three and four, you got Wardens, you know? If I started throwing in Witches and Withers, Skeletons and Soglins, it just becomes like like a zoo, like I said, and it just feels too chaotic and too, too uh, disparate. I don't know, that's just my personal preference. I never really wanted to do that. Uh, what happens to items not picked up? They rot. <laughs> uh, will you spend time ripping out dead redstone? No. <clears throat> How many Ravager dying spots did you fix? 50 I don't know a lot <laughs> a lot um are there any artifacts that were never retrieved no they were all they were all pulled out of the dungeon any regrets on the map um by the map you mean the one in your hand or do you mean the level design one well, this is uh this is Papa D 881 uh so I don't know which one if it's regrets on the map in your hand uh no I think it was fine maybe I could have put something different on there but I think I think it had the right information. Um, arguably, having treasure and frost ember drops on there weren't that important because it just went up and then it immediately faded back down. But it was satisfying to see. Um, any any regrets on the level design? Yeah, I'm sure there's there's. I'm very pleased with the level design, but there's cases I would have changed something differently. Um, what are the remnants of the old voice system? People talk about those droppers often. Oh, yeah, I just pointed, I, I see what you, you, you mean the redstone system for delivering discs. Yeah, that's all, that's all old redstone that needs to be torn out. I just showed it. Uh, is there going to be a guide on how to download everything? Nope, that'll just be the world download for Hermitcraft. Uh, why was the crown shop bad? We'll get to that in a bit. Uh, anything from decked out two you wish you didn't decked out one? Uh, yeah, all of it. <laughs> all of it. On a scale of one to ten, how satisfied are you with decked out two? Eleven. Uh, how did you acquire and trap wardens? I've shown that many times on, uh, on stream. I mean, there's a warden farm and I have a path through the nether that I take them through. It's very easy for me to get a warden right now. I just replaced all three of them two nights ago again, because they were all about to die again. They, the wardens generally last about a week and then I have to replace them. Uh, so by the way, for the world download, when you start, when your droppers start emptying and when your wardens start dying, the answer is not to get just... Just recopy the world download back again. I hope that's obvious. Um, ever thought about buffing players with suspicious stew? It's been affected or it's been suggested many times. Yeah, just didn't really want to deal with it. Uh, did you get any help with the redstone? I did. I did. I didn't do it all myself. I got help. Uh, mostly from um, smarter redstoners than me on my Patreon server. Uh, I got help on the card counter on the map. Uh, I got help with the card processor for the deep frost card uh, because I couldn't figure out how to do it. Um, I got help with the, um, what was it? The uh, uh, signal length encoder to set, because the first time I've ever done this kind of thing to send the signal down to the audio processor. There's one line going from the card processor down to the audio pool in the basement as i call it uh i got help with that um so yeah very various various other little things um yeah limburger helped me a lot um dead knight helped me other people from the patreon server grifter helped me i think yeah um and i'm, I'm probably forgetting names and i apologize um but i, I would say i mean i did i did 98 percent of the redstone myself other than that there was no no hermits helped me or anything if that's what you're if that's what you're getting at uh plans for multiplayer nope not except for just for fun uh what is your favorite room in the dungeon room is in quotes uh my favorite room in the dungeon is my favorite room in the dungeon is is this one this is my favorite place in all four levels beat up ship can't I can't praise him enough on the ship, um, but I'm also very pleased with what I did with the room around it. I spent a lot of time hanging all this stuff off the ceiling and everything and the vines and everything. It just it really felt really felt good in here. The water columns dropping from the ceilings, which I thought were just going to be aesthetic, turned out to be the ultimate sniper locations for Willie. Everything about this room, I think, is uh, is fantastic. So very, very pleased with it. I'm very curious how the door to level four works. Uh, 
that one is interesting. We can go take a look at that. It, it should be obvious to most of you. It's basically just a question. It's a basalt generator and some clever use of water logging uh, so to avoid damage. Uh, the, where is it? 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 It is right here. Okay, so the TNT falls from there from a dispenser. That should be uh, obvious. This right here, this is just a basalt generator right here. Basalt generator hooked up with your lava and your your uh, soul sand and your, your blue ice and all that stuff. That's constantly trying to repair the floor. But what you see right here is a bunch of stairs that are waterlogged and the stairs are facing inward so that you just see, you know, it, it just looks smooth. It looks like normal walls, but they're all really stairs that are waterlogged. Uh, and water log blocks can't be exploded. So that's how we have the explosion go on in here without the walls being all destroyed everywhere too. Uh, so yeah, very, very happy with how this turned out. Um, you know, so when the game, when the game is on, it basically disables the uh, basalt generator. So as soon as the game turns off, the basalt generator is like, okay, and just dunk, 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 and it just automatically repairs the floor. Super cool. How does nobody take damage when they fall down? I just answered that. But right here, this is carpet on top of snow blocks or powdered snow. So powdered snow, you don't take you don't take damage when you land on powdered snow. So that's why you can jump from all the way up at the top. How's our boys doing? Good job, pancakes. Uh, OK, back to the questions. How much clank is max clank? Uh, that's a good question. I think it's about 20. Um, well, well, we'll cover that in the redstone stream, but yeah, I would say I, it's, it's in the 20 to 22 range. I think, uh, we'll, we'll empty the, the hopper. We'll just say, uh, are you happy with the artifact pickup spots? Yeah. I don't think I would change those. Honestly, I think they were distributed. Well, I think they brought you to different areas of the dungeon. There were some places in the dungeon that the only time you would go there is because you had that artifact. So for the most part, they were really neglected. But I think that's inevitable no matter what. Uh, what is your favorite feature? Oh, geez. That's that's a pretty broad question. Uh, I don't know, probably the card system. The flexibility in what the cards could do probably is probably the thing that I think adds the most. The excitement of seeing cards and picking cards and adding them to your deck. Uh, would you do something different to make less Hermits give up after winning after phase five? You could insert phase three, phase four, phase seven there. Doesn't matter. It's, there was, a, there was it, we'll talk about that and what went wrong. Um, was there any secret with the water kittens? Nope. Nope. We were, de we were debating putting somewhere there, but we didn't. Uh, if you could do it all again, would you, would you do it again? Absolutely in a heartbeat. Uh, were there plans for more decked out to merge gear? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, there was. I can't tell you guys the, the, <laughs> how many we went through two big uh two big failures with merch uh and it was frustrating uh it, it's no secret like the uh well there's probably some stuff here i probably shouldn't say we're just gonna say yes <laughs> there were other attempts at merch and uh they didn't turn out the way i wanted to uh and that really delayed things and pushed us in other directions um yeah, I know a lot of you guys wanted t-shirts and sweatshirts and stuff. And I, all I can say is I made an honest attempt at it and I didn't like where it was going. And yeah, I, I, I pulled the plug on it cause I was not happy with it at all. And I didn't want to put something out there that I wasn't proud of. So, uh, it is what it is. But it's a bummer. I know I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to just throw merch at you guys for the sake of throw merch. I wanted to have something that was cool and that was like, yep, that represents the game that we did and it has that feel and I just couldn't get there. Uh, so yeah, that's unfortunate. Uh, I think that's it. There's, there's cause some other questions I skipped over and stuff, um, but those were kind of some of the better ones. Let me close that down. <clears throat> Are you happy with the artifact reward distribution? <laughs> yes, I am. And I know I am in the minority here. Um, I know I'm in the minority. I know I know the players and the viewers got very frustrated at the range of artifact distribution between levels. 
I still stand by it, and I think that range is, is important to have a little bit of excitement. Um, to distribute the amount of artifacts I had across all four, across all 80 droppers, if I if I compressed the variance range, it would have started to get very, very predictable what artifacts you were going to get. Like it would have been like if you are playing on hard, you are going to get one of these three, one of these four artifacts or something like that. And I think that would have just been very boring and monotonous. So I spread the gap in both directions, like, but, but human psychology is they focus on the bad times, right? When was the last time you heard someone pull out, you know, uh, an artifact that's the best artifact for that tier? No one ever goes, oh, that's too much. Or, or no one complains, right? They just, they, they're happy and they move on. But the bad ones stick out in their head and they think the system is flawed and everything. But personally, I think the range was great and I wouldn't change a thing with it. So yeah, I'm happy. How do you feel about Deathloop? <laughs> there are some that popped up more than others. We didn't hit the point where it was statistically, whatever the word is, like statistically uh, sound. There, there's, a, there's a term I'm forgetting right now, you know, where you hit a a critical number of sample sizes for the stats to actually be meaningful and we are far significantly significant yeah that's it we didn't get there at all you know um uh but it was approaching there was you could see kind of a bell curve of the artifact distribution based on the weights and how they were distributed and, and, and the levels that the players played but there were some that like death loop pope like was you know way more than the other ones like 30 percent more than the other ones for, for no reason so maybe maybe i did screw up one of the droppers right that, that's that could be that could be a thing. I might have screwed up one of the droppers and put Deathloop in an extra time when I shouldn't have. That could be the case. Uh, how many people died, tried to get chests in the ice trap on level one in the water? Oh, uh, I think we only got two people. I think we got, did we get Cub and Iskal? Correct me if I'm wrong. We got five? And the, are you serious? I don't remember getting that many people. I guess so. Okay. I don't remember. Wow, I forgot all of those. Well, then fantastic. That's great. I thought we got two. I mean, some people were spoiled because they not. They that came out wrong. Some people had the experience spoiled because they saw it in another person's stream or something like that. Um, so be it. It's fine. The fact that a couple people fell for it and we had that we had that experience was great. In the end, that was that was it was a very cheeky thing to do and it was fun and we did it because it was a clever trap but overall i don't think it's good to have traps it's just like and you're dead like <laughs> you are now you know i like it when there's like a little bit of skill or parkour or something that it's like it's a, it's a risky situation but just not an automatic you are dead so i wouldn't i wouldn't do too many of those again but for 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 what it was and how rarely that concept was used i think it was totally i think it was totally fun it was a fun exception. Yeah, exactly. That's a good way to put it. It was a great trap. Uh, yeah, the arrow trap we never used. Um, I've talked about that. The arrow trap. I I think it would have. It's a great Indiana Jones style trap that would have been fun one time. And then after that, it would have just been in a nuisance. And there's no way I would have actually caught people in it. They would have just, you know, taken the step in, triggered the system, backed up. Arrows would have fired. They would have ran through it kind of thing. And it would have gotten it would have gotten old um, and it would have just been more risk to the Ravagers and stuff like that. So anyways, I decided not to keep it. Uh, Agronet Enthusiast, <clears throat> lose my voice now. Thank you so much. I see, thank you. Sorry you missed yesterday, I see. The hat was amazing. Um, you had the biggest smile on your face watching reaction. Yeah, it was so good. It was so good, I see. And honestly, like when I had to, I had to move the nose to the side to, to drink, it was great. It was great. To do, um, thank you for the 1614. That's amazing. You lost 20 pounds while watching decked out runs while on the treadmill. Yeah, it's a good something, something to do while you're on the on the treadmill for sure. Uh, okay, let's get back to the list again, guys. This is a this is a chatty stream. Sorry. Uh, let's see, where am I going here? Okay, other thing. We're back to the thing things that went correct. <laughs> you want to go to that gym? <laughs> yeah. Um. Other things that went correct. Uh, evil notion, you go correct every single day. Thank you. Uh, for decked out three. Sorry, I can't read the rest of that. I don't know what you're talking about. 
Put a light out where Tango Cam can see it and the dungeon is on and run Tango Cam with replay mod recording all the time so you can review. Yeah, 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 yeah. I actually uh, was going to do that. Have Tango Cam just be my replay mod guy. And that way I had a, a history essentially of everything. It would have been tedious to go through that footage, but um, but yeah, it could have been done. Thank you, Evil. Uh, interesting question. Is there anything that you think Decked Out 1 did better than Decked Out 2? Oof. No. <laughs> Straight up no. I mean, Vex weren't different. If the AI changed, then that's not me doing something different. Um, yeah, it was built on a mushroom island. That was, that, that was nice, but with the lighting changes, and by the way, that's another thing that would have never made this deck out possible is the lighting changes. Changing it so that mobs only spawn in light level zero was huge for this. That allowed us, allowed me to build the dungeon that I wanted to build with the lighting and everything the way I wanted it to be. Yeah, Lycan. Lycan is the MVP. Exactly, Petrus. Lycan is my favorite block in the game. Like, it, what it allowed me to do and set the lighting in subtle ways and everything without keeping the entire thing spawn-proof um, was, was awesome. Uh, okay, so, other things that went right. Uh, for the most part, I think the pacing of the game went right. Uh, and by pacing, I mean the rate at which players were progressing, like pacing meaning across the phases, how was the game going, you know? Players were moving through deeper and deeper parts of the dungeon as the phases progressed at a good rate, I think. Like, they didn't hit phase four, or they didn't hit the burning dark in phase three. That was a concern, right? And conversely, we didn't get to phase eight and no one had been to the black mines. The pacing there in terms of how, how much of the content was being consumed versus where the game was, I thought that was good. I also think the, for the most part, and there's some exceptions to this that we'll probably talk about, um, cards being like the size of your their deck being built also really paced well with how far they were like, just everything that the rate at which the players were getting cards and moving deeper into the dungeon and stuff, I thought that all went fairly well i think if, if anything it could have been a little bit faster and there's some things with some of the cards i'll probably talk about in a bit but um you think uh deck building turned out kind of slow yeah I, I, we'll get to that yeah that's in some of the things the the so one of the things that went wrong that's on my list <clears throat> the cost of cards you disagree with yep that's on my list well it's not it's not the cost of cards. The way I look at it is the amount of frost embers the players had, but it's essentially the same of you can either lower the cost or you can give them more frost embers. And I have, if I, there, there was one of the questions and I don't remember where it was. And it was probably in that list and I missed it. If there was one thing I could do that took less than one day to implement, what would it be? Um, what I would do right now is make it so that when you get your artifact, I'm going to struggle explaining this correctly, but it's it's a way to give the player more frost embers. Um, essentially reward them when for, like give them five frost embers for every floor that they visit, but you get it coming out. So if they go to level three, when they leave level three after picking up an artifact, they get there's five frost embers waiting for them at that door. And then when they, they come through from level two to level one, there's five frost embers there as well to really reward deeper delving into the dungeon with frost embers and i think that would have done a couple of things it would have encouraged people to go deeper into the dungeon of course right because now just going to level four is 15 more frost embers just from playing the game um but it also would have helped in the shop as well and it would have really helped you know everyone says the prices were too high but this would be my fix for that leave the prices where they are but now more frost embers would have been given to the players as they get deeper into the game so it wouldn't have been so hard to acquire 50 frost embers to get some of those cards it would have been uh you know a a a successful black mines run most of them you would have had 50 uh 50 50 frost numbers um 
one of the other things, and again, I'm diverging onto one of the things that went wrong here, but we're on the topic. Um, the the common cards in the shop um, were were purchased too much for too long. Um, and that was my fault because the rate at which, uh, so down here, players were buying these cards, like way too much. And there was like the, there was kind of this barrier here where players were in this range for a long time before they broke into this range. Um, and I think having that plus five frost embers for every level would have helped get you out of the commons quicker and bumped you all the way over here quicker. Like the second you start doing medium and you're going down to level two, you would have been pretty much all of this would have been available to you. So I, th I think that, yeah, there was there was too much of a jump in the in the pricing um, from 10 to 16. Um, I wanted the the I, like I like I said, I probably wouldn't change the pricing system here. I would just change the frost embers. And I, and I honestly think that the, the idea I have of giving them more frost embers per floor uh, would would solve this right here. The second you go down to the Caves of Carnage, boom, plus five frost embers is going to bridge this gap and get you uh, all the places you need here. And to be clear for the people who are like the uh, technically people, I wouldn't give you the re you wouldn't get the rewards from just opening the door. You would have to get an artifact on that level. And then it was the it was the, the return trip where you would get them. So I, th I think that would have worked great. Um, and I think that would have helped solve a lot of things and it would have made a lot of these cards more attainable like Successful black mines runs you'd be you'd be buying from here anytime these were up here But there's there's other changes to, the, to this shop here. I also would have done um, Anyways, that's pacing. I think overall the pacing of the game went great um, Somewhat related to this. I think another thing that Was really key here to the design was putting cards and victory tomes in the same currency pool that was i think very important to pulling that player in two different directions and it made a very interesting decision about do i want to invest in my deck of cards or do i want to try to win this phase i think the scoring system and all that stuff I'm, I'm pretty pleased with how the scoring system for phases worked out like if you could buy uh victory tomes for crowns for instance it would have completely changed the game and taken away a lot of that interesting decision of of what you want to do is the pacing of how you want to build your deck versus do you want to win the faces and stuff so um i thought this was i thought this was great this this hybrid here it gave the players a difficult choice which is a good thing is a good thing um my opinion i know i know some people will uh so this is where scar did really really well yeah scar was very smart on when to buy tomes and when to buy cards he didn't have the most powerful deck but he bought tomes at the right time and he pulled out third place because of it um so yeah, uh, I think that was a, a good thing. Again, I know some people won't uh, agree. Uh, note blocks, we talked about this, the note blocks for the treasure and ember drops. Uh, super simple to implement, super glad we did them. X had a question. X is in Azuma, did I miss, is he in chat? I'm sorry if so. Oh, is Azuma here? I'll be happy to answer it. I don't know what it was. Yeah, sorry. Can you explain the tomes to snow layer conversions? Uh, hold on. Did any hermits get to see the forge? Oh, no. So I've talked about this, uh, Azuma, and for anyone else, the forge was. And again, we just, I just ran out of time. I should have worked on this sooner. This is this is part of the areas where the pacing did not go correctly. Um, we were just getting to the point in the game where I feel legendary cards would have started being added to the player's deck and then unfortunately the game was done. Um, the forge was supposed to be an area. There's nothing back here, right? It, it looked like there was, but there wasn't. Um, it was going to be a room I built that this is where you go to build legendary cards. Um, you're going to have to find the recipe and acquire these unique items throughout the dungeon that were going to be very hard to acquire. If you got them all in a single run, you would then come into the forge pay a certain amount of frost embers, go into this room that looked like a cool dwarven blacksmith forge kind of thing, and you would craft your legendary card uh, and put it in your deck. Um, it never happened, unfortunately. And it's probably one of my biggest disappointments with Decked Out is, is the things I didn't get to. This was one of the big things I obviously wanted to get to. Um, 
it was going to be super cool. Yeah, the idea of, of getting legendary cards weren't going to be available here. You were going to have to discover them yourself through finding things in the dungeon, acquiring weird uh, ingredients like a slime ball, you know, or uh, an ink sack or cooked fish or things like that. Um, we'll see. We'll get there. Yeah. But it, it didn't happen, unfortunately. Next time. Could have had impulse build. Yeah, maybe I could have. Didn't get to the secret cow level. Yeah, that would have been good. Uh, did you have any pre-design work started for the forge? I think I spent like a couple hours looking at ideas of how I wanted the forge to look. And then I just said, no, why am I wasting my time with this? Because that's down the road and I had more important things to work. Um, to work on. Yeah, the, the project could go on forever. Yes, for those asking, yeah, I do intend to do, and now you know I'm like going to regret this. Uh, I do intend to do Decked Out 3 someday. <laughs> Some year. That's the important part. I will do it again. I'd be stupid not to. It'd be, it was so much fun doing it, and I, it was so great. Um, so some year we will make an attempt at doing it at doing a decked out three um but don't hold your breath <laughs> i need time i need time uh the easter egg hunt the easter egg hunt was a success for the most part um I think it was a good smoke and mirrors way for me to have time to prepare level four because when the game released level four wasn't level four was built but it wasn't redstoned and i needed time to do that uh the easter egg hunt was a fun i mean that's all it was was smoke and mirrors it, it bought me time um to give a, some arbitrary excuse why level four wasn't open but i don't think it really held players back no one was really ready to go to level four all that timing and again that gets back to pacing all that pacing worked out perfectly i think the time the, the when they found the last eggs to when they really wanted to be going to level four coincided perfectly um so i think that was great i would have what i would have done a little bit differently was i probably would have made it where you there wasn't enough incentive to find easter eggs i put you know 10 coins or or crowns or five crowns in most of them and you had to get out with those crowns um that appealed to certain players but it only appealed to the uh secret finding type players like pearl and stuff like that right pearl and hypno were really good at, at, at finding the eggs other players didn't really have that much interest in them and i wish i put more reward slash incentive on finding the eggs probably something that didn't require you to get out of the dungeon probably something that was like by finding the egg you were guaranteed to get this thing outside the dungeon or something i don't know how i would have implemented that um, but I think a little bit more reward for finding each Easter egg would have been a good thing. An ethereal card? Well, ethereal cards are a whole separate topic. We'll talk about those in a bit. Maybe, maybe a unique card for that. Yeah. In the end, the only thing that really had value to the players was cards. So that's what I should have really been rewarding more of is, is making more interesting cards. Like if you find three Easter eggs, you get a custom card, the egg hunter card, right? And it does something for you. That's really cool. Um, I think something, something like that. I don't, I don't have an answer right now, but can you show us the legendary cards? I already did. Yeah, I already did uh, last week. Le watch my video. It's on the second channel. The uh, what was left out. I think it's titled decked out. What was left out? I go over all the legendary cards and all of the, all of the ideas and everything that we didn't get to. <clears throat> I think custom cards would have been a lot. I'm not saying that everyone would have gotten their own custom card. Oh, hi, Mosul. <laughs> um, now I see who's saying that. <laughs> uh, all right, moving on. The other, the last thing on my list of things that went well was the player rooms. I never came up with a term for it that I liked, but in the end, it didn't matter. I didn't need it. The great hall, I was this. This worked out fantastic, and I really want to thank the Hermits for quite honestly blowing me away with how much time they spent decorating these rooms. The cubby holes, as we call them, or their their, their crypts, as Scar wanted to call it. Whatever they are, it doesn't matter. Like, they really, really didn't cut corners here. I thought, like, 
if I was honest, I thought maybe five or six people will decorate the rooms and, and most people would just probably leave it blank or just put a sign that says like, you know, so-and-so's room or something. Um, and they really, they really went all out here. I got, yeah, Corrales though. Corrales to me wins the best one. There's some really good ones, don't get me wrong, but Corrales would probably win my vote as, as the best looking one. He did such a good job on it. Um, but there, there's so many good ones. Oh, hi. Hi there, Cuff. <laughs> um so yeah i think i think this concept were great and honestly guys the number one thing this is this is again gonna sound lame but the number one thing the best thing about decked out the best thing better than the game better than any of the things i've listed was this space right here and you guys know what i mean it was what decked out did is it brought so many hermits together interacting and hanging out and having fun and being silly and making jokes and it all happened right there right here for the most part right some of it happened up up here and stuff and that was great and everything but this general area waiting to play decked out turned out to be some of the best content ever um i didn't get to see a lot of it because i was watching the games and i have no regrets but like that that's the best part was just logging in and knowing that hey all the hermits are going to be hanging out at decked out let's go let's go hang out over there uh, you know, gem punching me every every time I come over here. All that stuff is great, you know. So th this was this was the best part. The, the hermit interaction was so so good, so good. Uh, that's the end of the list of things that went right. Now the list of things that went wrong. How, how long are we in here? Yeah, that, that was that was a lot. I'm gonna have to go quicky quicker through this. <laughs> because the list of what went wrong is is comprehensive. We'll say. Yeah, the car shuffler went wrong for sure. The, the car shuffler wasn't horrible. Me trying to fix the car shuffler was horrible. Yeah. I'm super happy with the car shuffler now for what it's worth. I'm super happy with the car shuffler now. I just wish I had the car shuffler I had now when I launched it. But anyway, that's that's the number one thing that did not go right with decked out. Can you guys guess it? The number one thing that did not go the way I had hoped. <laughs> Vex. Yes. 100% the Vex. You guys are right. Vex were a massive disappointment. Um, I don't know. I still love what the Vex represent. I still, and I, and I carried this part over from decked out one, the idea that you are angering the spirits of the dungeon and the Vex just appear out of the walls. I feel like the gameplay of that is so good. It's so satisfying and it's should be terrifying for the player in the end it just wasn't right before i added the water pools which i hated adding absolutely hated adding vex were a complete joke right they just don't attack the players enough so i don't know if there's a couple a couple ways i could respond to this right like i could say well i just need to add a lot more evokers maybe um and that that could be like i know cub was pushing me for more evokers and he's probably right i just don't know if like if something isn't working does adding more of it make it work maybe if i added you know there, there's two there, there's two ways to look at it do i add more spots i wanted to definitely add more spots where evokers were but then i think i also probably needed to add for each spot instead of having one evoker there have three evokers there if i if i had three evokers in every little pod where there's one right now that would have tripled the amount of vex that come out that probably would have helped um and then add more places you know there's really only like two places in the entire game where evokers and vex really matter all the other ones were a complete waste of time and players just for the most part ran through them um so i think it would have been good if there were more places where there were evokers um the i mean the fun fact when i originally started like when i was first designing level one and stuff the idea was i wanted to have the evokers in a mine cart and i wanted the mine cart to have a, have a have a mine cart path essentially that went through the entire dungeon um with little peak holes in the floor like a like a little almost like a sewer system where they could peek through um and so you wouldn't know where the evokers were and, the, and once you hit max clank these minecarts of evokers would just periodically be released into the dungeon and they would start making their loop through the dungeon and it depends where you know where you were when they came by and stuff but i dropped that because a it was going to be a tremendous amount of work um 
and B, it would have been noisy and you would have heard the minecart coming. And I just mostly the work. I decided to drop it. Um, but in retrospect, I, I'm curious if that would have worked better, but I don't know. It sounds loud. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Cub chat. What do you say? I think if focus on a few key spots would have made it much more challenging issues where they were about three or four spots that were totally safe and could camp heal at max clank. Yeah. The problem is there's, there's, there's no way for me to make in an ideal world, when you're at max clank, the entire dungeon is under threat, but there's no way I could cover the entire dungeon with evokers. I mean, I could, but it would have taken me. I would have had to have had 80 to 100 evokers hidden in the walls, and that would have been like three weeks of work. <laughs> yeah, it would have taken forever to get all that working. Um, I agree, though, that more evokers were necessary, both in more evoker spots and the amount of evokers in each spot, I think would have would have helped. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Evokers at the berry was all you needed. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, there's that one case, yes, where people started to make a habit of getting past the first evoker spot and going to camp the berry room there. I don't think they went there because the berries were there. They went there because it was a safe room for the most part. That's what the cart would have done, though. If I pulled it off, yeah, it would have made the entire... You got, you got to understand how much work it is, not in, in, in terms of time, but to have that mine cart going everywhere, there's a lot of sacrifices I have to make in level design uh, to make all these visible spots where the evokers can see the player and not have it look hideous. Like on level one, it's okay because I could have used snow blocks and stuff or powdered snow for the most part. But once you get down to the caves of carnage and especially in the black mines, there's really no way to... Well, there's never mind. There's no evokers on the black mines. Anyways, the caves of carnage, though, it would have been really tough to make all these little peak holes. And I think it really would have sacrificed the look like having the this like rail of visibility along the bottom of all the caves would have really detracted, I think. Um, Vex did still have the most total kills in the dungeon by far. Uh, yeah, I guess. Did they have I mean, they didn't have more than Ravagers, though, right? If you add all the Ravagers up, Ravagers had way more. Vex, you're counting Vex as one entity, though. They, they, what was it? The uh, Ravagers had like 400 and something kills, I think. Uh, can they see through lava? Yeah. Yeah, Evokers can see through powdered snow, yeah. Oh, Willie was a monster. Yeah, we talked about Willie. He was incredible. Um, so anyways, yeah, there's something to be learned about the Vex. They did not work and something needs to change or they need to be removed and something else needs to... The concept of Clank... I think worked great. The threat of Clank, the system of Clank worked great. It's just the penalty for Max Clank did not work. Um, and I hated having to do like the water drop thing or something, but it was necessary. Um, next thing that went wrong. I, don't, I wouldn't say this really went wrong, um, but it could have been better, I think. And that's the treasure drops. I think, and my, and I, my brain's been kind of like all over the place with how this could have been done better. Um, Treasure was originally like the evokers going to be a random drop system where treasure could literally drop anywhere in the dungeon. There was going to be like a water track that went across all the ceilings and trap doors that were going to just randomly open, but those trap doors would essentially be everywhere. So treasure could drop anywhere along this water track, which would go through. It was, it was very similar to the evoker idea. Um, yeah, did not you remember that we were us working on the redstone for that? Yeah. Um, we were trying to, I was trying to prototype ideas on how to do that. And I had a working system and stuff. And again, I cut it just because of the, the amount of time it would have taken, the amount of impact it would have had on other redstone systems, having all these water tracks everywhere and stuff, the impact it would have had on level design, having trap doors and all the ceilings and stuff like that. Um, so I cut it. Um, what we ended up with was treasure drops at certain locations. And, and as expected, the players very much zone in on the, they memorize all those locations and then just make their rounds to those different locations i don't think that's a horrible thing that's just gameplay people learn maps and map knowledge should be rewarding um i think one of the changes i would do though is make it so that let's try to try to try, try to stop the farming and make it so that if you really want treasure you have to go deeper into the dungeon like if you get treasure from a spot it shouldn't drop treasure again it should just be like you want more treasure? Go deeper. And I, and I should have escalated the treasure gains at deeper levels too. I mean, ignoring the fact that treasure was mostly useless in this game and it was just a per it was just a key purchasing system. We'll get to that later. But assuming treasure was valuable, I really should have scaled. I should have tipped the, the scales more 
and had more much more treasure dropping deeper in the dungeon as it was it was like yeah you don't get crowns on level one you start to get crowns on level three and on four you get a lot of crowns if you play it right but it, it wasn't enough and it needed to be more drastic i probably there's a lot of things i would like to do different about treasure um did treasure drop on level four not in the traditional way no did you like the key system yeah you must have just got here at the beginning of the stream i said the key system was one of the best things ever uh, and I do think mixing treasure with keys, well, I don't know. Lack of treasure on level four besides the door was rough for deep frost runs. I guess, I mean, it was it was a risk versus reward. I assume you know how it works, Cub. Um, it's, you know, you can get way more treasure on level four if you, if you do the thing. But if you don't, you get zero, yeah. Um... I also should have ramped up the uh, the artifact scaling on level four too, but that's a whole separate thing. Um, so, anyways, yeah, I think I think treasure could have been could have been done better, uh, and I and I for sure will do better. Uh, what else went wrong? Wardens, yeah, I mean, there's no, there's no obvious, <laughs> there's no surprise there. I was super disappointed in wardens. They said a uh, they said a great atmosphere, and they're initially terrifying, but I think every hermit realized that wardens really aren't a threat. And nothing pains me more than to have all the stupid pressure plates I had to add and stuff like that. But before the pressure plates, like level three was an absolute joke, um, an absolute joke. So it, we had to do something to make it challenging. And that's the only thing that was that really would have done it. Um, yeah, it, pressure plate spam, which was stupid. I hate it. Anyone who don't think I'm like, haha, it was like it was an absolute regret having to do that. Pressure plates did help, but I get why people didn't like them. But the only alternative was to like totally pull wardens out of level three and redesign the whole thing and come in with a new mob and everything. And that was just too much work. Pressure plates were good in your opinion. They were they were necessary. I don't think they were fun. Um, it, it pressure plates pulled you out of the ambiance and made it more of a staring at the floor game which I didn't like. You were staring at the floor and just deciding when to jump and the whole level became like a little mini parkour puzzle and stuff as opposed to being, you know, having your eyes up and exploring and looking around and being afraid and stuff. So, yeah. Um, but that was all a side effect of Wardens. Yeah, I, I definitely won't use Wardens again. And it's a shame because I love Wardens. I love the ambiance. I love the fear they initially inspire. The darkness, like quite honestly, I know people have complained about the darkness, but the darkness really scares you. And it's, it's that signal to know that there's a warden nearby you and stuff. All that stuff is great, but they're just too easy to evade. Um, too easy to evade. Yeah, Zoglins were a big, many people suggested Zoglins. I mean, Zoglins are basically just Ravagers, right? I don't, there's no difference there. I don't, I don't think different different shape. Maybe they a little bit different numbers and what they hit and stuff like that. But in in the end, Zoglins don't feel like they're that much different. Uh, Agronet, well, yeah, Agronet didn't pan out the way I thought it would. Um, partially because I didn't implement it as comprehensive as I thought. Um, the feedback for when Agronet was active was insufficient. Basically to players, Agronet was just this word they heard and they knew it was bad, but they had no idea of when it was affecting them. And, and the end result is when it did work, they just randomly got a word and attacking them that they don't feel should have been attacking them, which is super unsatisfying. So in the end, it, it yeah, it, it probably allowed me to make wardens more challenging, but in a way that was not good for the player like why am i being attacked i haven't stepped on anything you know there's there's some of that so um and yeah agronet just it didn't exactly as a viewer i couldn't see the impact of agronet yeah the only impact you would see is you would hear more of those ding 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 dings going around from the calibrated skull from the from the uh what do you call it the sensors and then you would a warden would aggro the player for seemingly no reason and it didn't really help I, in, in retrospect agronet was a very cool idea that didn't do anything it was it wasn't worth the time and research and everything I put into it. It needed to be on more often. I don't know. Based on what I just said, I mean it's it didn't really work, and when it did work, it was very frustrating for the player. It, it's kind of one of those like 
game designer gotcha flags like aha i found a way to beat them but it's not the goal isn't to beat them the goal is to make them have more fun and to make them feel more afraid and agronet didn't make them feel more afraid it was just a way to make them die more in an unsatisfying way um agronet would have been better if there was audio cues letting them know that it was active that would have added to the suspense of it if there was some way of knowing that like wardens are tracking you because of agronet or they had some kind of feedback to let them know that agronet was doing something to them that would have been better um none of that existed and it was all transparent and yeah oh well could have been done better we talked about rusty alfonso you got to go back and watch the vod i showed it everything about how i did it Is that a Vex I'm seeing there? Oh, is that, that must be a squid or whatever it is. Okay. <clears throat> Do silence mobs work with wardens? Yeah, you could have silenced the warden. Yeah. Would you prefer to use command blocks rather than vanilla redstone? I mean, if I wanted to get it done faster and easier, yeah, but it, it's a totally different project. So I'm, I'm glad it was done with vanilla redstone. That's part of what made it satisfying. Oh, Mrs. T is so sick. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. How you feeling? No. Uh, no. Um, what else? We got to get through this list. The crown shop. Oh, uh, let's talk about that. <sighs> I, it's so funny because I have a postmortem from decked out one. And one of the big complaints I had for decked out one was the crown shop was, was horrible. What's the, this? This is the crown shop right here. This is where you spend your crowns that you pull out of the game to buy things. Um, one of my goals for decked out two was to make the crown shop worthwhile. I failed. I failed horribly because all I did was change how the shop recycles. I didn't change the idea of what you can buy with. For the most part, I didn't change the idea of what you can buy with crowns. The failure is I'm trying to make the crown shop be a place where you essentially buy power ups or things to make your runs more beneficial. In the end, players don't want that. They just want to run the dungeon more or they want permanent upgrades. Um, I know there's exceptions, guys. I know there's exceptions. There's some people that did embrace it toward the end and stuff. I'm just saying overall, overall, this this was the crown shop right there. That was it. That's pretty much and I don't blame them Like as a player. I don't know that I would have, unless we change the pricing. Like maybe if shards were introduced as 16 crowns from day one and everyone complained that they were too expensive, then maybe that would have made these things more valuable. It would have swayed the economy. So maybe my economy was off a little bit. My pricing scheme was off a little bit. Um, but for the most part, this was just, and you'll notice there's, there's blank spots. Like there's just, there's just not many options here. It was basically ethereal cards, a silly dungeon lackey thing and a crown shop. So. To me, this was one of the biggest failures and I would probably do it totally differently. Um, if I had to do it over, I don't really have the ideas yet, but I would it would be something where I would have to add a new system like. And this is this is a scary concept, but card upgrades, right? You buy your cards the way you buy them now, but if you want to make all of your cards get a plus on them or something, you have to do it with various upgrades in the in the shop here and you're you're buying ingredients or something or and you have to collect the correct ingredients or oh i need a i need a you know whatever it is i need a a magma cube that you buy here and if i have the magma cube and the and the the zing bot i can put them together and i can upgrade this card over here or i, I don't know i'm making this up right um and i'm not even saying that's the right idea all I'm saying is the entire idea of what you buy in the crown shop needs to be completely thrown away and sp spun on its head. I love the idea of the treasure system. I love the idea that I separated coins and crowns. I thought that was good, assuming my upgrader worked, which it never did. Cr uh, coins allowed me to have a little, a lot more frequent drops in the dungeon without making everyone stupid rich. Um, and then upgrading to a crown. I thought that whole process was cool and, satis and satisfying and everything. But what you did with crowns was, was, was poop. So yeah, I would do that again. 
Everyone's got their ideas, I know. You love the pay it forward mechanic? No, that was a bug. Everyone loved pay it forward, but it was it was a bug. I mean, it's it could have stayed, I guess, but it just felt arbitrary who was getting rewarded and who wasn't. But it was 100% a bug. Everyone loves bugs. I mean, the pay it forward is the equivalent of like, what if all of the, what if all of the prices in the frost, the prices of all the cards was random, plus or minus 10, and you just started putting in frost embers until the card got purchased. That's essentially what you guys are saying is great. <laughs> and that just feels like it's so arbitrary and bleh, I, don't, I don't like it. So anyways, that's why I, <laughs> that's why it that's why it was gone. <laughs> what if you just did not sell shards? Uh, I think that would have made this then then no one would have come over here at all. And this would have been a ghost town. Shards are the only thing making crowns worth it. If I took that away, it would, yeah. People would have bought things just because they had nothing else to spend them on, but they really wouldn't have been excited about it. I think, I think this, there just needs to be more things here that are, that are really coveted that for, for long-term investment. Essentially everything here is an ethereal. It's a, it's a one-shot benefit and players don't want one-shot benefits. They want permanent benefits. Anyway. Some of you disagree with me. I agree, and I totally respect that. Two words, loot boxes. Loot boxes. Loot boxes, right there. What if all the ethereals in the shop were permanent? Then they wouldn't be ethereals. Then you would only buy them once? <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, Crown Shop, super disappointing. Uh, okay, yeah, I think you guys, you guys will probably agree with this one. The, uh, the rare cards. This is getting back to this shop here. Um, I think one of the mistakes I made here is saying that green cards on the left, blue cards on the right. If I had to do this over, and I don't have this solved yet, I don't really have a concrete proposal, but I think they need to be in intermingled more. I think a rare card shouldn't just mean it's a, it's the, like the next, these words, I'm gonna contradict myself in words here, so I apologize, but it's like right now, it's like common cards end, rare cards begin. I think it's okay to say that there are common cards that cost more and there are rare cards that are cheaper. I think the important thing is that the rare card is, first of all, rare. Second, by, by meaning it rarely shows up in the shop. And second of all, it just means that it is better for the cost at which you are buying it, right? So I think you can, off the top of my head, right? Like I could have made Eerie Silence be rare and cost 25 embers right think of like and this is kind of being inspired by like for the i mean it's many games so don't but for those that played like world of warcraft right you can get a blue level 30 item and all it means is it's really good for level 30. a level 50 green item is better than that level 30 blue item but that level 30 blue item was still really good at level 30. So maybe there's an item here that's rare that pops up here that is good for this cost point, but is surpassed by a common out here. And I think I think that would have been a better system. I think that would have been a better system. I, I think the cut and dry between green and blue was a, a missed opportunity, I think. Um, I think rare should, shouldn't, right now rares are a milestone. You say to yourself, I can't wait until I can buy the rares. And instead, I think rare should be the equivalent of hitting the jackpot on a slot, slot machine, right? When these cards are coming up, when the rare pops up, it should be like, bam, hit it. Yes. You know, I got, the, I got the rare, right? 
just like hitting the rare loot in in world of warcraft is or something right that's what it should have been in in this tiered system i would i would change this so i would just spread i still like the idea don't get me wrong i like the idea of like the green and the blue cards i just would have interwoven them together i would have made the blues more rare but sprinkle them around more or or maybe the whole card shop would have just been greens and there would have been a separate shop that you know that's probably the way to do it just rares could could show up there but they could be at any price point anyway that's i'm not i don't have a solution there but you guys see where i'm kind of going there i think this could have been a lot better um instead of it just being a paywall to get to the next color it would have been better to be more excited about rares so i i would have done that better yeah and I think everyone kind of agrees that, yeah, this, this was a little bit missed opportunity, you know, and, and quite honestly, this, this content here, when we talk about pacing, this content here wasn't really regardless. Some of these cards, I really missed. I really failed on the design. I could go over every card and say whether it worked or didn't. I'm not going to do that because there's a lot of cards. There's many cards in this range that, that missed. And I'll admit that I just, the, the design was off and I, and I apologize for that. Um, anyway, let's move on. Rare cards, yeah. I, I kind of bummed. Yeah, B Sense was was garbage. Um, B Sense was a pullover from decked out one, and it was a cool mechanic, redstone wise. That's why I wanted to implement it, but it was useless. Yeah, so it's fine. Um, DD, thank you. Effects from decked out. <laughs> Pay us fair wage, and maybe we'll kill more hermits. <laughs> uh, kill more hermits, and then and then you'll get a race. How about that? Sarah Joe, thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much uh yes i already talked about the common cards and giving the extra five frost emerald stuff uh all right ethereal cards here's what i'll say about ethereal cards i they weren't horrible i do put them in the bucket of what went wrong i think the idea of ethereal cards was interesting idea 10 crowns to re-roll card shop oh spend your crowns here to re-roll this maybe yeah um, I think ethereal cards, the concept of ethereal cards, I still think is good. I wouldn't, I'm, I'm glad I added them. Um, I just think probably the balance was off. They weren't really that sought after. Um, I think if, if, if I probably made all of the ethereal cards be moment of clarity aside, I think moment of clarity fit its role of, I've got some leftover change, you know? Moment of clarity was two things. One, it's I've got six frost embers and I want to and I don't want to I want to waste them. And it's also an end game card for when you have all of your commons filled out, but you've got eight frost embers left or something. You can buy you can buy moment of clarity. So I'm, I'm happy with moment of clarity. I thought that card was fine. The ones up in the crown shop, I think they probably all should have been boosted 15 to 20 percent to be a little bit more in terms of their effectiveness and their numbers and what they did. And then I think that would they would have started to become more enticing. You know, the the ethereal cards really should have made you had a super powered run, and they didn't do that. They helped, but they weren't enough to really pull people in and really make it a hard decision. Everyone wanted more shards rather than you know it's, it's a debate of do I want to run the dungeon more often or do I want to run the dungeon more effectively when the runs I have. That's what that's what an ethereal card is making you decide between buying a shard, right? I, I like the idea that the shards are being sold. It's do I want to run the dungeon again or do I want to do I want to run the dungeon 10 times or do I want to run the dungeon eight times but have those eight runs be much better, you know, or much more likely to be a success. And that if you get the numbers right, that's an interesting decision. And I don't think I don't think I hit those numbers. Porkchop power was successful. Uh, toward the end, I think players were starting to see But I think like tactical approach could have been plus two on all of its numbers, probably. Um, the artifact system. Yeah, that was a success. That was a success. I think the people really, the players really enjoyed the artifact artifact system. And it wasn't hard for me to, to tie it in uh, to make the entire artifact system. I mean, I already had all this. All I had to do was put this line of droppers here with the artifacts, with the water stream. And that water stream just went over and put the item into there and then tied it into the same return system. So it took me probably like two or three hours to put the whole artifact system in, maybe four hours or so. Yeah, artifacts were super cool. Um, if the game was going on longer, 
you know, for more phases. If we went to phase 12, I think people starting to get full sets of artifacts would have been a cool thing. It was one stream. Did we do it in stream? Okay, yeah. Uh, do you think the Halloween event made pork chop power less desirable? No. Um, I think maybe the problem with... I don't know why, if I'm honest, I don't know why players... I thought the Halloween event would have been... Or the idea of getting pumpkins would have been more enticing. I'm not... And it's probably one of the three things. Either the Halloween hut was not... I think some players just... It was in a dangerous location where ravagers were, were frequently around, which... Maybe. Um, that The location of the Halloween hut might have been a deterrent. The fact that it might generate clank was probably a deterrent. Or the rewards were just undervalued, but I thought the rewards were pretty good. Given that like you could, it was a quick way to get a key to the black mines. You could get some crowns or you get the pork chops, which was pretty huge. Like I thought the, I thought the reward was good. I'm not sure why most players, it, it didn't get the, uh, it didn't get the love that I thought. People didn't see it as enticing or, or to go over there when they got a pumpkin. So I, I missed the I missed the mark on something. You think the location? Early on players seemed to, oh, of course. Early on they didn't know what it was. It was exciting because it was new content. But once they understood what it what it did, they, they started to devalue it or whatever. So I think I think it was location maybe. I guess I don't know. I feel like I know I know Pearl says it was the locations, but I feel like most of the Ravagers were up in the higher end of the mushroom area and not in the lower end. I feel like most of the time when you come across, you're coming home across Drip Leaf. There's generally not a Ravager right there. I feel like, but the risk didn't match the reward. Yeah, maybe. I mean, that must be it. Yeah. Halloween hut needed two exits. Maybe. Yeah. If there was if there if if out the back of the hermit cave you could go out to like the other end of the mushroom cave so that there was like a loop, you're right, that would have been better. So that you could run in with ravagers chasing you. Um but even even if you go in the hut and a ravager chasing you, it just takes like I mean, what was it? Hypno did it the other day. You could just kinda wait and run out because ravagers are dumb and they take three seconds to aggro you. But anyway, I, I don't regret doing the uh, the Halloween event. I thought it was fun. I like the sound effects we had and stuff like that. Um, Dread Perry, thank you. Beast, thank you. How much of pain was the concept of even if something was overpowered, if the hermits didn't think it was overpowered, it was useless. Is there a method you found that could help, sir? Uh, I think what you're talking about, Beast, is the game designer's perception of the value of something versus the player's perception of the value of something and when they don't either way you have to make adjustments because the player's perception is what's more important than what the game designer thinks if the designer thinks something is is super awesome and the players don't think it's awesome which happened many times in this game i was like why are people not using this card or this thing or whatever it doesn't matter if their perception isn't there you have to adjust uh and likewise, if all the pe if the players think something is really valuable and you don't, you're probably either wrong or again, it's not about what's value. It's about it's about getting the players to have many things that they think are the same value so that they have hard decisions about what they want to pick. If there's one clear choice about that's the card I pick or or that's the route I take all the time, it doesn't matter if they're right or wrong. It needs to be fixed because it's taking away from gameplay. It's taking away from their decision process. So that's the important thing, I think. I don't know if I answered your question, Beast. I probably didn't. Uh, Revelo, thank you for the piece of pie. Personally, I would love to use the items in the shop in the theories, but the value of the shard was always way higher to the point where D, the shard devalued the great shop items. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, I think there's... Right, we can all agree if... It's just a numbers game. If, if tactical approach, being an ethereal permanent card, added... 20 clank block and 20 treasure people would have bought it every single time right so there's clearly some numbers there that would have made it an interesting decision um and i think it was just it was just a little bit too low tactical approach was undervalued by players i agree 
but that's what we were just talking about lord black thing it doesn't it doesn't matter what i as the designer thinks it's what the players think i thought tactical approach was a very good card uh but the players didn't agree and i'm getting many people here probably didn't agree but to me that ability to have clank already established when you enter the dungeon is huge and to have treasure drop as you enter the dungeon is huge because you're going to get that key to level two super fast with having that plus five treasure but anyway hindsight uh where else are we where are we common cards ethereal cards uh yeah so here's a disappointment when i was originally designing the cards and stuff i was all super excited about uh, let's see i felt shard was too low even at 10 20 or even 25. if it was 20 or 25 cub no one would have bought a shard until phase five <laughs> no one had those kind of that kind of money until later on uh, ethereal cards are really good, but just since the shard was so much more valuable. Yeah. So, I mean, it's really a question of raise the price of shards or there's so many dials to turn, right? You could raise the price of shards. You could lower the price of the ethereals. You could raise the value of ethereals. All of those dials would have done the same thing if tuned correctly and they weren't tuned correctly. Um, or change the amount, you know, you also have to figure out the amount of crowns coming out of the dungeon and stuff too. So, yeah. Dynamic pricing. Yeah, I was, I, it, it was a consideration, honestly. One of the, and I was going to do it manually. And what I was going to do is if something was being bought all the time, I was going to raise the price. And if something wasn't being bought, I was going to lower the price. You know, like every phase, adjust the prices. I just never did it. <clears throat> I did, I did raise the price of shards once. And the backlash I got was, you know, what? The hate. <laughs> Everyone was super angry at me, but it clearly needed to be. It clearly needed to go up. Eight was too cheap. Ten is Cubs right. Ten is too cheap. Probably should have been twenty-five. Whew. I raised the price of charts three times. I only raised it once. Went from eight to start into ten. Yeah, that's it. evil, uh, evil food match. You touched on a good point of the cost of something is relative to the phase. You know, in phase one through three, 10 was a lot. In phase six through eight, 10 was nothing. Um, you know, should I have raised all the prices of items every phase? That would have really devalued the reward the player felt for acquiring more crowns so i don't know it's tough it's tough you i mean you want to when player you know in phase two when a player gets three crowns they're excited in phase seven when a player gets 15 crowns they're excited they're more excited and you want them to feel like that they're making progress and that's like those 15 crowns have to feel way more than those three crowns originally did but if you keep jacking up the prices then you're taken away from that at the same time so it's 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 like inflation yeah it's tough uh tibbs thank you for the 10 gifted subs at wolf rise you just ordered your your uh dungeon master vinyl fantastic fantastic uh player dependent prices yeah right uh the uh so yeah anyways one of the things that didn't work when i was originally designing the cards i was very excited I'm, I, I love deck building games, right? I love I love games where you build cards and try to, you know, I don't play magic that much, but I love the idea of it. If I had more time, I would play magic. The idea of putting cards together that have synergy and making them work together. And I really tried to build that with these cards. To some extent, I think I I, I did it and some extent I didn't, but it didn't matter because uh, and, and the bullet point I have here is that deck building never really happened. Players never uh, built a deck for the most part around a style maybe it was starting to happen right at the end but it was basically just hey that's a good card and i can afford it i'll buy it and throw it in my deck uh and i think that was a problem with the card design i have ideas i'm not going to go into now um but i think there needs to be probably i guess i'm going to go into it a little bit it is a little bit of the, the cards need a little bit of classification right now there's just cards are all in one pool they have numbers on them and they do good things for you 
where for those of you that play magic and and i i know you guys know way more about this than i do and you're gonna um technically me but please don't the basic idea of magic is that like you you have land cards or something right that a lot that give you a color of magic which allows you to play those color of cards so therefore you want to have the right the right kind of land and the right kind of color of card to go and then you build okay i'm going to build a green deck or i'm going to build a blue deck that doesn't exist here so i think one of the things i would i would if i had to do this again is i would have cards be <clears throat> call them color categories or something any card could be played at any time but i would like the idea of and i started to, to i started to play with this idea but the idea of some cards generate a resource we'll just call it blue a card adds plus three blue and then another card like you know imagine if well, let's take a card here right sure we'll take bounding strides bounding strides is now a card that blocks to hazard and adds 30 seconds of jump boost but if you have two blue charged this card adds two minutes of jump boost so you see what i did there is basically now bounty strides still works but the car the cards could be supercharged by spending this other resource that you're accumulating and now you can have much more synergy between cards about which ones generate certain colors of resource and which ones consume that color of resource um that's the general idea i really would like to do i actually have a full spreadsheet it was a concept i was calling like focus and then i had something called uh what did i call it i had a term for these color charges and stuff and i was doing it and i and then i was like what am i doing slow down this is this is decked out this has just got to be simple and we ended up with this but in the end i think i probably should have gone for it um and made uh made it wasn't it wasn't delve delve was the difficulty thing um I think I should have had that that like trifecta of colors, like a red, blue, green charging system and then a producing consuming thing. It really would have made it more interesting. Like you see a card and you're like, that's a good card, but I'm more I'm, I'm I've got a blue deck. You know, that's kind of a green card or maybe there could have been like rainbow cards, too, that, that, that consume multiple colors and stuff like that. I think I think what I learned from this time and having the game be played, I could I could make a much better card system, but that's just. You know, that's the first time I've ever designed a card system, so it is what it is. Would Hermits understand that? That was one of the reasons why I didn't do it. But I think I got to say, I'm very impressed with how much the Hermits figured out the, the concepts of the game. With few exceptions, they whatever I threw at them, they understood it pretty quick. And I think we could have done more. I think it could have done more. I think they would have easily understood the if a card said plus two and there was a blue box. They would have been like what's what's blue and then they would have seen another card that says consumes two blue colon extra effect you know i i think that would have been very very easy yeah i mean some of those things are on on the tcg game right <clears throat> they would have got it 40 is too many cards that's yeah the, the number of cards i don't think 40 is way off I do agree that maybe 40 missed the mark a little bit. I'm, I feel like 30 might have been too low, though. Um, basically, if I lower the number of cards, I'm discouraging the player from going deeper into the dungeon uh, because the fear of running out of cards before you get to the place you want to be and get out, right? The number of cards is really a, a timer and how long you're allowed to spend in the dungeon and how much you can get from that run. I think 40 was in the ballpark and it wasn't bad for a random stab in the dark when we started. Probably 35 would have been better, maybe. Definitely not more than 40. I think I think 40 might have been a, a tad high. Um, but I don't feel like it was really affecting the gameplay that much. There were cases where people were like leaving the dungeon. They had 20 cards and then that's when they just went into farm mode, which Eh, not great right so that that means they should have been allowed to have much less cards in their in their hand um or in their deck yeah i think i think if i had to do it again 35 would be would be good <clears throat> you're right and the, the other dial there isn't just when i say dial i hope you guys know what i mean there's things to tweak to change gameplay like the number of cards they can have in their deck is one dial the other dial is how fast those cards are drawn right now it's every 30 seconds a card is drawn you know there's different implications of whether you go 30 second card draw with 40 cards or go to a 30 card deck and 
uh slow down the card draw right and there's kind of different ways that you could tweak it to get the same results um but anyway i didn't i didn't feel the deck limit was really making that much of an impact on the game we were probably getting into the phases right now like if we were going to phase 10 i'd really be starting to think about like is 40 right is that is that maybe that needs to be changed or something and you know eh. Forty. A lot of people. A lot of people think forty was close, and I think it was close too. So, like I said, I don't think it's that. I don't think it's that big of a deal. It wasn't. It wasn't a critical issue that we needed to fix or anything. You like phase ten? It was close enough. Yeah, Mosul. Exactly. Uh So yeah, I was sad that deck building as a concept never happened. But in the end, there's just really not enough cards too. Um, we needed, I, you know, I probably, if I, I probably to really have like the concept of clever deck building, we probably would have needed at least two to three times the amount of cards we had now. And that's a lot of work, <laughs> you know, so. Uh, do you think some of the changes were a bit too heavy handed, like extra lava at the entrance of level two? No, I think adding the extra lava to level two was great. Many people died there. Yeah. Uh, the reason I added the, I, I tried to find areas of the dungeon that were boring and didn't have any interesting gameplay to them. So that's why we added the lava there. Maybe you could add a little bit less there, but I mean, it's just another parkour puzzle, just like any other one. It's, it's an easy parkour puzzle with catastrophic consequences, as opposed to a difficult parkour puzzle with minimal consequences like drip leaf, you know? <laughs> Many people will die there, but that is a price I'm willing to pay. <laughs> yeah, I like that. The four iron bars were never used. It was never intended to be used. It was meant to be a strong. You talking about over the lava there? Yeah, that was that was a ravager pass that was uh, added. Uh, interesting idea. Could you pay crowns before a run to affect the available cards in the shop? I mean, there, there, there was the, you know, the card that I was hoping would get more love was eyes on the prize, wherever that is this card. Um, this, this card wasn't desirable at all. Um, probably because there was no deck building and there was very few times where players were like, I really want, I regret not buying that car. There was probably very few times if, if we had some of those uh card categories and resource systems i'm talking about then players would have been like i really need more just specific cards i'm looking for to build out my deck and this kind of concept would have been more uh more sought after but given that every card is just like yay good the you know there's some cards that some people wanted like i know etho really wanted uh you know gem wanted her eerie silence for a while and stuff like that but it wasn't enough to to just take a card slot for it um so there could have been ways yeah maybe 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 that's it maybe the card isn't the right way to do that maybe the way to do that was to spend crowns instead like maybe or i don't know you know there's a lot of different ways to do it but i like the idea of getting extra options available in the shop how you acquire that option i'm not sure maybe maybe i missed the mark on this one i mean i obviously missed the mark on it because no one no one did it it probably should have been this card was also probably introduced way too late this feels like it should have been a common card over here for, you know, 15 or something like that, right? Because the whole point of this card is to build your deck out and it's a late game card and that that seems wrong. So it should have it should have just been probably the card could have the same and just been 20 and everything would have been great um, or somewhere over there would have been would have been better. But anyway, one of the many mistakes. Uh, let's see. Hazard is in my what went wrong category. I, I could go on for a while on this one. Um, I have mixed feelings on Hazard. I feel Hazard was cool, but also missed the mark a little bit too. Uh, I think probably the biggest drawback to Hazard, and I've talked about this a little bit uh, in, uh, I don't remember what stream it was. Hazard right now triggers on just time, right? It's like every 25 seconds or something like that Hazard an event has an event a hazard event happens i think if i had to do it over again i like the idea of hazard i like the idea of the dungeon becoming more restrictive and traps activating and stuff i love that uh time being it's it's driving force i think i would change and i would i would introduce like these events in the dungeon that you had to 
go deal with. You know, I, I talked about that, like the, the, the Among Us reactor event. Very metaphorical. Yeah, with heavy quotes around it. Um, something that goes off in the dungeon, and if you address it, you prevent hazard from happening. You know, it, essentially like, hey, something bad's gonna happen. You can either decide to go over here and address it by disabling or, or fixing the system, or you can ignore it and, and face the penalties. Something along that I think is fun because it's it's more of a dynamic event that drives the player to go to different locations and keep them on their toes and have to make decisions on the fly based on where they are and where that event is and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so I think, I think I'd have to split Hazard down the line and say I like the results of Hazard. I don't like how Hazard was generated. It felt too fixed, um, too deterministic, and, and a lot of players, potentially they're right, just felt like, well, what's the point of Hazard? Everything's closed anyways, you know? Um, so it could, it could have been a lot better. It could have been a lot better in how it was generated. I think something more fun. Time is not fun because you have no, you have no control over time. Um, something that the player had more, more ways of dealing with, I think would have been good. Uh, oh yeah. I also think, uh, some notes here I left for myself. My, my philosophy on Hazard was there's always got to be one path. You know, Hazard can't close you off and prevent you from leaving the dungeon, and I still stand by that. I think the problem, though, was that... Uh, so there's always one way to get out of the dungeon. So the, the way to play now is just to figure out what that way was and just go that way all the time. So therefore, the impacts of Hazard weren't that effective, assuming you knew what the magical path to take was because you knew you could just bypass all the hazard anyways, even at the cost of that being a little bit more of a lengthy path. It would have been interesting, I think, if the the path out that was guaranteed was not fixed every time. Um, if that was randomized, then hazard would have felt way more impactful. But then at the same time, I would have toned down the rate at which hazard was generated too. <clears throat> So, I, I mean, I, the goal isn't for Hazard just to make your life miserable. It's just, it's another system. I like the idea, the metaphor of the dungeon collapsing in and closing off around you and stuff. There's that, there's that feeling. Uh, and I don't, I don't think it hit its mark perfectly. Um, it could have been Razma. Yeah, that's what I was just saying, Cub. Like, picking, like, it would have been a little bit more complicated Redstone, but like, okay, you know, here's paths A, B, and C. Let's pick one of them randomly and leave that one open and then set the other two as you are allowed to close now. You know, it would have been it would have been two passes, right? Every every hazard trigger would have had to on game start figure out, am I the one that is going to be locked open? And those would have to be all serialized together, which because to make sure that there's only one of them, which is tricky. Um, and then another one that's like every hazard event now attempt to close. If you are one of the ones that can close, it would have got a lot more complicated to do, to do hazard. And there's a lot of hazard in the game. So there's a lot of work there. Um, but yeah, <laughs> very easy in code, very hard in redstone. Yeah. That sums up pretty much everything. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it definitely doable. Yeah. Cub. So I, th I think hazard was a. You know, it was a, it was a first introduction, right? We we didn't have hazard in really in in uh, decked out one, so it was kind of a new concept here, and I still like it. But yeah, it needs to be done better. Catch up mechanisms, and the quotes of "I'm so far behind, why should I bother playing?" This is obviously something that went wrong. I don't know that there's an answer for this. If I'm honest, um, once you add a scoring system of any kind. And once you start to have someone gaining points and going into the lead, you will inevitably have people who give up because they feel they are too far behind. Um, and that's just a fact of, I mean, the only solution I can think of is to have every player's score be a complete secret until the end of the game and then just have one big massive reveal. That's like, bam, this person wins, <laughs> you know? Um, that's one way. I, I, someone, I, it, it scrolled off already. Uh, per potato, multiple goals. Yes, we kind of had multiple goals, right? Pearl was playing the game for very different reasons than Cub and Hypno were playing the game, and and those are and well, Cub was kind of riding the line a little bit there too, which is which is great, which is why I like watching Cub play because he does it all. Um, but it, it, different players had different goals, and that's great, right? We had the goal of finding Easter eggs. We had the goal of 
maximizing the victory tomes. Um, we had the goal, you know, that Etho had for a while there of just gathering all the cards. That's great, and I probably could have done a better job of having having more goals. The question is, are those goals enough to keep players playing when the the game, the you know, the victory tome is like the real game? You know, I don't know. It, it's tough. It's it's a really hard thing to solve. Um, <clears throat> certain people are driven by discovering secrets, and certain people aren't. That's just different different play styles, you know, the the explorer, whatever it is. Um, you know, it's it's really tough to keep everyone engaged when when you have different skill sets. Let's be honest, right? People have different skills and the people who are good at that are going to move ahead and the people who aren't good at it aren't gonna move ahead and it's tough. Multiple win conditions, yeah. And you know, and we have like you could win a phase trophy, right? That was some people's goal. That was Scar's goal. Scar knew he wasn't going to win the game, but he really wanted to do the best that he could and, and win a phase. And he did that, you know? And that, and I totally commend him for that. Um, yeah, there could have been different ways, different leaderboards, different scoring systems. Um, you know, hey, you're playing the Victory Tomes. Great. You're playing the Easter egg game over here. You're playing the, you know, who can get the most treasure out of the game over here. Yeah, yeah I could have done that. Um... Maybe that's the right answer. I don't know. Teams. Yeah, <laughs> serious. Uh, teams are a whole different thing. I really, I was reluctant, but excited and curious to, to introduce teams. Um, it would have been very hard to keep balance and stuff, especially if those teams were permanent teams. Um, I'm not going to go into that. That's a whole different thing. But yeah, uh, teams would have been a very, very interesting concept if done correct. But it's very dangerous because if you get it wrong, it's even further because uh, now you even get if you're a good player who's on a bad team you're not going to play so it's it's rough you know fun is more important than risk fun is more important than everything yeah <clears throat> every sport game has ranked matches or leagues yeah we don't have enough players to set up ranks though i mean when, when there's only like you know realistically 12 or 15 players uh it's 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 how do you set up you could set up tiers who wants to be in the c tier no one <laughs> you know i don't know so anyways it's a it's a hard problem i don't i don't know what the right answer is um Next thing on my list is, and this isn't an important one, but it was as I went on more and more, I kind of, uh, only thing I didn't like about the competition was the same points for different places, like seventh, 10th, all had one point. Yeah, I get that cub. Um, maybe I was wrong. The reason I did that is because I didn't want to have the disparity between points awarded be extreme, right? If 10th place got 10, or if first place got 10th point, 10 points, and it was a linear spread down to 10th place getting one point, then yes, everyone would have been rewarded probably. But the gap there is, you know, you implicitly now have this 10 point gap between first and, and 10th place. It works. It just means like having one bad phase really screws you over even more. So I, I was trying to make the phases not be as impactful, but you might be right. I might I might have missed the mark on that one. I don't know. I know, I know some people said that it was frustrating to get third place and someone else get fourth place and you get the same points as them. That's the downside of what I was trying to do, but. <clears throat> Inverse is true of having one good face. Yeah. Um, where was I? Oh yeah. This was something when I started decked out, I didn't care at all about. And then as the game went on and on, I was like, well, that would have been fun, especially after seeing uh, this uh, this D&D module that someone made uh, is lore. The, the, I originally had no lore to the game, and then I just kind of made something up on one stream about how, you know, the, the, the wardens came up from the from the burning dark and started to take over the mines. And then the, the ravagers were sent in to try to stop the wardens, but they failed because the wardens were too strong. And we were kind of getting somewhere there. Lore! I know. But I think in the end, I I don't want lore for the sake of having lore, but I think the idea of having lore be part of the gameplay, if that makes sense. There, there's something to be said there about like, I'm, I'm 
piecing together the story of how this all transpired and uh and and characters and and things like that i think would have been would have been cool like why is willie down there yeah you know what happened to willie why is he there and maybe if i find out willie's story then maybe i can actually help him um i don't know it's it's a lot of extra work um oh my gosh donut man thank you You can watch some of the older Hermitcraft Moonlight videos. It's cool to see how your past games, the Tangled and Boombox, have evolved. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, I've I've been enjoying making games in Minecraft ever since I've been doing it. So, Donut Man, thank you so so much. That was incredibly generous of you. Um, Moonlight, Moonlight was crazy. Um, anyways, yeah, I don't I don't know if I would really go crazy with with the lore, but it is one of those things. I'm like, yeah, maybe there's something there. Maybe there's something there. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Yeah, I, I mean, this is getting into like super vague stuff, but like more dynamic events uh, to force live decision making. This is something I've always wanted, and I think I generally failed something that like I go into the dungeon and there needs to be more variables in the dungeon that make my run be not so deterministic. Like right now, the only variables you get are where's my key and generally like where are the ravagers? Um, something else that gave you, and this was, this was on, this was slated since day one. We were going to have mini quests and the, the towel man, as we called it, was going to have Daniel. Thank you for the 3114. Thank you so much, Daniel. Um, Rusty did that. Yeah. Rusty did that. Rusty gave you essentially a side quest by giving you an item. Um, but I like the idea. Like I would, I would like really like to embrace that even more and have like, a ton of simple quests that I don't know how you would, I don't have the details behind them. Maybe it was too much work, but just the idea of throw you a curveball while you're in the dungeon that makes you change what you're doing. Um, some cards did that, and I've talked about this, and I really like the cards that, you know, uh, Reckless Charge. Regardless of whether it was worth it or not, it was an interesting card. If you ignore the numbers behind it and the frequency with which it went off and stuff, which many people have separate have trouble separating, but the idea of the card I think was really cool because the card played and it made you respond and do something differently right then because that card played. I don't think there's any other card in the game that does that. I mean, Bounding Stride changes the mode you're in and says, okay, now I have permission to do this extra thing because this card played. But nothing is like, this card played, immediately change what you're doing and go do this thing. And that's a good thing and we didn't get enough of that. There needs to be more. And that's what these, the, the hazard reactor events are supposed to be. Is like something happens, divert Whoop. you know we need we needed more of that pirate's booty kind of it was it was in that category yes but even even pirate's booty is like you hear the card and you're now you're like all right i got five minutes i got five minutes i'll i'll change my high level path maybe but i'm not diverting immediately to go do something um i think i think things that more encouraged or frightened you or did something in the immediate would have been would have been great and we didn't we didn't have that really <clears throat> Rusty repair kit was great, yeah. More of that would have been good. Speedrunner card? I mean, no one, did anyone ever play speedrunner card? I don't think so. Maybe more negative cards? Uh, maybe, yeah. I mean, we, we only had one negative card stumble. We had the concept of red cards, what I was calling Banes. Um, so there could have been other ones for sure, yeah. Make stumbles reactor events. Well, I think the idea was that there would there would probably be another card that was the ha was the reactor event, but it works for hazard, not for not for clank. So yeah, uh, whatever this reactor event was, probably would, I don't know if it's a card because gar cards are global. I think I think localized is better. Seeing something that is has a location is more important than a global event. It's easier to react to a point than it is to a an event. If that makes sense. But maybe I'm maybe I'm just babbling. I don't know. If you know if you know something is happening over there, and that's either an attraction or a fear, you can react better than just like global state change, which is like what jump boost is and stuff. You're glad I didn't reveal it, Rusty Repair Kit. Yeah, I think in the end, like having those secrets and not telling the viewers was a good thing. I'm glad I didn't show anyone level four. 
I'm glad I still to this day haven't explained how all of level four is beaten. I think the players going, and I wish there was more of this. I think the, the viewers, you guys going along with the players and trying to figure things out was and is a great thing. You know, people asking, what's this do? How's this work? And some people knowing and some not knowing. It's unfortunate the chat ruins it all, but it, I mean, that's just the internet and that's the way it is. But having some of those mysteries was good. But that's that's why on level four, those things that, you know, up in, up in the vines, I didn't I didn't show. I didn't want the players to see because I knew the players would figure it out immediately um, and then just spread it. Right. And it's better for the it was better for the for the players, for the hermits to figure it out for themselves, I think. And I'm super proud of Pearl for doing that. Yeah, Pearl's Pearl streams were absolutely incredible. And the suspense, right? I mean, let's be honest. My the highest viewed VOD on my second channel is the one that reveals level four. It was exciting. People were super excited to see a whole new level just suddenly appear. That was cool. I could have I could have shown that before the before the game even launched, and it would have been cool to see it. But it was more it was more fun to have that anticipation and go along for the ride. Yeah. Um. That's it. That's it. I've got some other little notes and stuff, but. We've already been going on for quite some time. I want to show you guys, uh, for those who have been st sticking around. This is a chatty stream, guys. Sorry. Um, I want to show you guys the... I'm going to put a link. I'll tweet this. I'll tweet this link. Um, I'll put a link uh, right here as well. Um, but I want to show you guys the Dungeons & Dragons module that was made for Decked Out. Um, it's on 5th edition. Uh, so if you're playing fifth, fifth edition right now, it'll fit right in. Um, it's super amazing how well this is done, guys. So, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, I need to go here and I need to go pull this up and we're going to do this. Like you can tell already from the first page that this is no joke. They use templates to coincide with with how the actual fifth edition campaigns are done. Um, <clears throat> this is cool, guys. If you got, again, follow me on Twitter. I will, I will post the link out to it there. I'll probably put it here too, but many of you guys will miss it. Um, it'll go out, I'll do, I'll do a tweet where I uh, give the download to this. I just want to, I mean, it's 108 pages, so I can't, I can't go into all the details, but guys, like sources, maps, credits. This is so professionally done. Look at the table of contents, right? It feels, like a whole campaign okay there's a village called hermelthen that you start in and then there's this, this massive lore behind deep frost citadel uh thaddeus holston who was supposed to be me i think i think there's a lot of npcs in here which are designed after the hermits i think they're i think their first name starts with the first letter of the hermit's name and stuff like that um if you play dnd you as a player or a dm especially as a dm you're going to want to download this, I think, because just the crossover is super cool. Um, and then you can see the different chapters, like there's going into the Deep Frost Citadel and there's all kinds of like backstory on like, uh, like all of this is like, oh, the story of Thaddeus Holston and adventure structure and what Skulk is. There's this whole Skulk mechanic in here of what it means and how it infects the players and stuff like that. Um, running the adventure tips and everything. There's a hazard system built in. Um, you're losing your mind. Yeah, it's insanely cool. Insanely cool. Adventure hooks, how to get your players in, how to start it. Um, corruption level and what the hazard, what the, uh, what the skull does at different corruption levels. <clears throat> Here's a bunch of, uh, NPCs who I think are named after the hermits. I'm not positive though. Some of them I couldn't piece together. Backstories and beliefs about Deep Frost Citadel. Missing townsfolk. This is insane, guys. Town locations. Look, you get your first little maps here of the village, all the key points. It feels so professional, right? So professional. Um, look at this, like the parts you read out to to uh, to your players and stuff. Like all everything you need to know about the town and all the places and all the all the all the NPCs inside the village. Um, entrance into the black mines why why the deep frost citadel was closed down and everything like the crypt going silent and everything um let, let me keep scrolling here um there's an event i mean i don't want to spoil it but there's an event where there's a siege on the town like it's super cool uh where some of the creatures come out of the of the thing and you got to fight them off um hold on, hold on deep frost citadel role playing different events 
the road, important NPCs. So this is a map of uh they obviously didn't do the Great Hall. They did they they improvised what the entrance to uh to Deep Frost Citadel was, but there's a whole story here with the events and locations and what's going on and everything. Yeah, hold on, guys. We're not even there yet. Okay, this is still all Deep Frost Citadel, just like the surface. <clears throat> um NPC stat blocks for everybody in the game, all the important characters. Uh this is all still just uh deep frost citadel okay scrolling down scroll this is like in the towers and everything right now there's like this living portrait i didn't even read about okay still going still going still going and then boom you enter just level one the frozen crypt i will guys i will down i will i will i will tweet out a link and i will paste the link here when we're done here so so hold on i trust me i want to make sure you guys all get this um there's something called a wanderer and this this is your hazard system and and like a d12 that figures out which hazard doors are closing off and everything right here um and all the different hazards and what they mean and what happens and everything like that look look at this look look at the map look at the map for the fro for the for the frozen crypt you got your ice tunnels here it matches almost perfectly <clears throat> the the crypt matches absolutely perfectly this is insane right this is insane with all these like key points f1 through 23 and then boom here's all the details of all the key locations there's a snowman in the dungeon there's the there's the pond the ravine the river of souls it's all here guys i am so excited for this there's a yeti's lair dripstone pond yeah this is free you guys are all downloading this Little, little 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 extra pictures here that were probably ripped from my my videos and i love it like the the detail here lava room uh entombed foreman the twin tombs the kneeling man is here absolutely cool look look does that look familiar does that look familiar it's it's like the necromancer's library the bottom of the crypt it's the bottom of the crypt and can you imagine if we were if if the hermits were ever gonna stream D D? this would have to be it it's incredible um osiris thank you thank you so much for the piece of pie osiris and i totally see what you're saying yeah speedy thank you <clears throat> evil thank you <laughs> don't tempt me evil don't tempt me um yeah Check it out. Library. What comes next? Boom. We're going into the Caves of Carnage. The key to the Black Mines. Um, running this chapter. Hazard. All the different hazard locations in level two. Look, you want a stat block for a Ravager? There you go. You're going to run into Ravagers down here. You want to see a map? Look. Look at this. Look at this. I mean... I, I can't stop smiling at this. You got your lava. You got your mushroom. You got your pirate boat. You got everything. Chain pits, crossroads, dripstone caverns, door to the black mines, mushroom forest, ax axolotl ponds, lake overlook, young ravagers, minor spore servants. There's like a whole spore and myoconid thing going on here, guys, for those who don't know the uh, myoconids. Where is it? There's the lake, the bridge overlook. Where is he? There he is. One eye willy stat block. You're going to run into willy down here. Amazing. Amazing. <clears throat> You go into the boat, like, look, captain's cabin, the gun deck, you explore, uh, you explore the, 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 the pirate ship. Look, here's maps of the pirate ship, spider den. Ravager nest, iron golem lab. <laughs> How amazing is this? Oh, chapter three, the black mines. This is where Skulk starts to become really an issue and how it infects the players it's basically skulk is basically like a curse in D, D terms you're fighting skulk brutes um some liberties were taken here there's a whole set of skulk creatures skulk catalyst skulk creatures and stuff like that different mobs you fight um features again the hazard system look at these maps look at these maps look at these maps it's amazing it's amazing I mean, and we're still scrolling, guys. We're still scrolling. Look, this is level two of the Black Mines. So well done. So professional. So professional. Level three of the Black Mines. The Foreman's Office. What comes next? The Burning Dark. The Grand Finale. The Escape. 
the run out running this chapter soul echoes i'm not you know like look at this look at this guys right we're not gonna we're not gonna spoil it but it's insane it's insane you have the reddit link uh i have does the reddit link have the direct the reddit link is old noises does it have the direct download check the download before you before you uh give it noises make sure it's got the actual pdf in it because there was a first pass where it was just a word doc and then they went back and turned it into like a professional pdf i want to make sure that's when people are downloading I'm so going to, if anyone runs this, I want to hear how it goes, please. Yeah, it has a PDF download. Yeah, then uh, yeah, hit it noises. All right, guys, the link is coming up. It is a Reddit thread where uh, the author posted on the, I think it was on the Hermitcraft Reddit. They posted this. I mean, they sent me an email directly, so I haven't seen it, but I assume it's got everything in it. Check Discord. Yeah. That's perfect noises. Do it. <laughs> We're gonna DDoS Reddit, yeah. Um, so guys, yeah, I cannot I cannot tell you for the, for those of you that stuck around for all this whole stream and for those of you that love playing uh D, D like how do you not download this and i encourage you i read about 70 percent of it and i was blown away by the character development the story the individual npc goals and reasons and reasons like this, the backstory of deep frost citadel and everything like you have a lot of information as a dm to cover all this the side cases and stuff like that super cool <clears throat> so anyways let me close that off Close this down. There you go. There's the, there is the link. Please feel free to follow it and uh, download it. If you, if you don't even play D&D, but you know someone that does, and if, especially if that person knows of Decked Out, please send it to them. They're going to love it. Yeah. I want, I want to see someone actually uh, run this and see how it turns out. I think it'll be, I think it'll be super cool. Um, You've never played DD. Yeah, I think I think it'd be super fun to play this and see how like you would go in with a little bit of knowledge and like every time you got to a new area and they started like, oh, it's it's a it's the Ravager Den. You'd be like, there would be all these like little 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 like connections to the game, which I think would be super satisfying. Yeah. I should run it. I'm not good enough as a DM. I've tried to DM a couple times and I'm I need more practice. I'm big enough to get Matt Mercer or Brennan to run it as a one shot, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm glad I saw your winky there, evil. <laughs> I was going to come slap you. I mean, keep in mind, guys, this is not a one shot. <laughs> there is so much content here that this would take 20 sessions, 15 sessions. Yeah, there's there's way too much content here. It would take weeks to get through all of this. Yeah, I mean, it depends. On, yeah, measuring in weeks, is, you got to go do it in sessions but or hours, but I feel like there's at least 50 hours of D&D &D there. Yeah, it's crazy. So there's that, yeah. Um, all right, I'm going to wrap it up today, guys. Uh, thank you for hanging out. I appreciate you guys hanging out for me chatting. Oh, people running the dungeon. Uh, I appreciate you guys hanging out for this chat. Uh, my throat is killing me. That is more talking than I think I've ever done in a stream. Um, but is there a cow level? No, there is no cow level. Sorry to disappoint you. And that's not me joking. There actually is no cow level. Um, you guys are great. Thank you for having the patience for letting me go through the entire game and give you my thoughts on everything. Uh, some things work great. Some things didn't work so great. Some things I'm, I wish I could have done better. But in the end, in the end, all that matters is I'm super, super, super happy with uh, how this game turned out, and the the things I'm upset about aren't aren't that important. Tango, can please? You got it. Let me get that running for him. Do 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 do. That should bring on Tango Cam. There we go. 
Um, tomorrow, I'm going to take the day off. Wednesday, we'll be back. I, like I said, we still got two big streams, I think. Um, I want to do, we got to do the world download stream where I go through. And that, that, there may not be much to do there. I don't know. But I want to do a stream dedicated to the world download, going through all the things. Answer your questions about how to run the game and what needs to happen. And I'm hoping that's minimal. Um, but I want to make sure everything is ready to go so that you download the world and boom, you're, you're playing. Um, so we might like organize the cards and stuff, things like that. Um, the other stream I want to do is a redstone stream. I don't know if that's going to be a tour. I don't know if that's going to be question and answer, maybe a little combination of both. Maybe for the hermits who are interested, I will just tell them to tune in or log into the server and they can be here as well. And I can describe it. We'll, we'll figure out how all that works. Um, and again, that's, I agree, that's not a stream for everyone. That's for the redstone enthusiasts who have questions and concerns and want to mock my, my spaghetti. I'm, I'm totally okay with that. Um, so I don't know when those are going to happen. One of them will happen this week. One of them will probably happen next week. Um, and that's that. That's all I got for you. Let's go raise Gizzle face. Red can type skizzle man boom um you guys are the best you guys are the best thank you for the support today thank you for everything uh if you haven't seen we have a uh we have this guy Stability. i'll open him on wednesday if you guys want to see him the the tango tech youtube is available sorry i'm mentioning it now <laughs> check my video out today for the link if you want and uh, i'll see you guys wednesday Goodbye.